Spock! Spock! Ship. Out of danger. Hi guys, welcome to uh, Admiral Teague's show where we try to overcome the problems thrown at us by StreamYards. It's good to see everyone. Um, how are you doing this morning? Uh, it's been a little bit of a crazy day for me so far as I have come up against the annual scam. The annual scam that T-Mobile does where they pretend that, uh, and hi Mark and everybody else who's out there listening. Uh, Andy, hello. I'm sorry that I'm late guys, I really am. I lost an hour of my life trying to reason with unreasonable idiots, a, a you know, T-Mobile, about their annual scam. It's 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 now it's time to call it what it is. It's the annual scam, where where T-Mobile pretends, and I do mean pretends, uh, and portends to to be able to deliver on an offer to watch Major League Baseball. Uh, they say this is a hundred and fifty dollar value. However, if you go on the Major League Baseball site, it's a hundred and nineteen dollars. So. It's, it's a lie from the bat, from the very first pitch, as we would say. And uh, all I can tell you is, uh, let's take a look at what happened. This morning at approximately 9 a.m. Eastern Time, I received a promotional offer from, from T-Mobile about Major League Baseball app unlimited uh, viewing for the entire season. I, like the last four years, the offer was simply a scam. It didn't work. After after 35 minutes on the phone with their representative, they informed me that they couldn't make it happen, but that someone else could. Then they changed their mind and took over the call again and said that they could fix it. Then they passed me to tech assistance. 75 minutes later, I gave up, just like every other year. It's just an annual scam by T-Mobile. I don't know what makes them so so uh, so, so secure in doing it, but... Wow, what a nightmare. At any rate, judging by the analytics of the world, and what I mean by that is the analytics of my channel, wow, we're coming off a very successful view of Masters of the Air. I want to thank everyone who joined me for that. You guys are great. Uh, Masters of the Air was pretty good. Uh, in fact, I would have to say that if you didn't get a chance to like binge it, if you binged it, this one with Masters of the Air, binging is better. Binging better. And we'll, we'll talk about the birthday of Leonard Nimoy soon, but right now we're just getting getting off the ground. And I'm sorry that I'm late, but what can I tell you? Uh, there are things in this world beyond our control. One of them is scam offers made annually by the same phone company. I just, I don't understand how they could be so inept and just be so so sure of themselves. It's like, uh, wow, I really just pay for nothing. Like, if not for them making a false offer, I have like an hour back, and I know what the hell happened at P Diddy's. So. Uh, next order of business. What the hell is going on with P. Diddy and why are they calling him P. Diddley? Um, let's see. Diddy's home reportedly raided by federal agents. Wow. ABC Los Angeles. This happened in New York, Miami, and LA. Homeland Security. What the fuck? Is he, is, is he trafficking? I mean, I'm trying to figure this out here. It's good to see everybody and it's good to have some friends along for the ride. Let's take a look. Um, Homey Hills, Los Angeles, KABC reports, Homeland Security agents on Monday raided a Holmby Hills mansion associated with rap mobile Sean Diddy Combs and his production company. Sounds to me like what that means is they lease but do not own that area. Okay, so uh, a lot of people do that. Let's just keep going. It's believed the raid, as well as a similar operation at Combs' home in Miami, was associated with a federal, whoa, sex uh, trafficking investigation. This is some, this is dark now. Uh, sex trafficking investigation based out of where I am, my hometown, New York City. I will say this: um, a lot of people have a lot of things to say about New York, including how only an idiot, uh, only a town like New York, could produce an idiot like me. Well, perhaps that is in fact true. I am a product. We're all products of our environment, are we not? And products of our of, of our parents' attempt to do a good job at upbringing. And right now, it looks like. Uh, Boy, am I glad that I have nothing really in common with Pete Diddy Cobes. Born in Manhattan, uh, I, I am from Queens. 
Uh, you know what? He dig he dug J Lo. I never did. Uh, P Diddy, his friend um, Shane Barrow, should be getting out of jail right about now for covering up for something that they say P Diddy did uh, with an incident. And hello, Matt G. Hello, it's nice to see you. And hail to you, Mr. House Party Six. Um, you know, whenever you are ready to go about picking my brain, um, I'm ready to do that uh, thing that you you emailed me about. Uh, you interview me or, or or ask me questions or just throw them in the chat. By the way, it's 62 in Los Angeles, 50 degrees in New York, so pretty nice. Combs has recently, so we're talking about P. Diddy here, Combs has recently been associated with legal troubles that include lawsuits over alleged sexual assaults and sex trafficking. Whoa. HSI agents were conducting their operations in the 200 block of South Mapleton Drive in Holmby Hills, a wealthy Los Angeles enclave known to, as a home for celebrities and the Playboy Mansion. Uh, the address is associated with Combs Bad Boy Film Production Company. Yeah, you know what? Maybe you want to call it Choir Boy Film Production Company. That is just absolutely off the hook. Uh, the allegations against Combs are insane. Um, but might be true. We don't know if they're true. I'm just saying the nature of these is so deeply concerning and so insane that it might be over for Sean uh, Puffy Combs. Uh, not that he's done much in a really, but when was the last short P. Diddy record? Uh, agents were seen detaining two men who were later identified as Diddy's sons, sources told ABC News. The two sons were not under arrest, but being detained outside as agents searched the property. So that would seem to indicate that this is more focused on, on Combs than his sons. That said, who knows? Who knows? Um, someone may have been able to punk his computer. We just don't know yet. But, uh, they, you know, what? that is one smart thing to do. You're like, you know what, guys? Just leave the cell phones right here or take the cell phones with you. You can make a phone call while, the, while we watch you. But we can't just let you free range roam around this house while we search it. That would me to me would seem to make sense to all of us. But uh, I do again want to thank everyone who's come by. And let's see, uh, it's it's a hearty hails out to Andy, Mr. House Party, Mark, and uh, hey, where's Tim? He, I didn't, I don't see Tim. Tim, where are you, buddy? Uh, but hey, you know what? If you could tweet out that I'm live, I'm late, which didn't help engagement. And uh, you know what, uh, boy. Uh, starting out the uh, starting starting out the show by explaining that you should never trust T-Mobile probably was redundant, but you know what? Boy, was I ever fed up. Let's see. Dozens of agents were searching through property, bringing out boxes, and even looking through cushions in an outdoor in outdoor pool furniture. <sighs> Neighbors tell Eyewitness News they frequently see parties at the property lasting all night, but they weren't aware of any illegal activities. Well, if I had called him up and ratted him out for living next door to me and I thought he was maybe dangerous and was associated possibly with someone getting shot years ago and that people were willing to go to jail possibly to cover up the things he did and that he might be a weird, 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 weird guy. Um, you know what? I don't know what to tell you. Um, wow. This is all just absolutely mind-blowing, insane stuff. Um, Jay-Z, not in trouble. Um, you know, maybe it's time to like look deeper into the music of Jay-Z. LL Cool J, it's time to make a comeback. Uh, this is a train wreck, just a train wreck for 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 uh, Puffy Combs here. Um, soon after the news came out, tours were bringing buses of tourists by the home to watch feds continue the investigation. Holy smokes, so it's a freak show. Federal agents were also at his home in my also at a home in Miami associated with Combs. Earlier today, Homeland Security investigators investigations HSI in New York executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation uh, with assistance from HSI Los Angeles, HSI Miami, our local law enforcement pa partners. We will provide further information as it becomes available, the Department of Homeland Security said in a statement released to the media. So really, our least popular federal agency, the Department of Homeland Security, disliked by people who come here um, you know, without the proper authorization for what they do to them, disliked by people who want people to stop coming here illegally because they don't seem, seemingly do uh, the greatest job at that. Uh, and so looking maybe to recover some of their image, uh, because ICE is part of this uh, overarching thing. You know, ICE is part of Homeland Security now. 
But uh, ABC doing some terrible reporting here by not telling us what the HSI abbreviation meant until the third time they used it, which is stylistically wrong. Uh, very, very bad reporting. But uh, but let's see. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department was also on scene reported in a sporting role. The department confirmed women who have made public ac accusations against Diddy are welcoming Monday's law enforcement activity. Holy smoke. Attorney Douglas Wigdor, who represents Cassie Ventura, a singer, actor, former girlfriend of Combs. They're just, by the way, stylistic disaster here on this uh, ABC News post that we're looking at. Just stylistic, um, just absolutely horrible, horrible stylistically, written as though in crayon by someone who is of an idiot level of IQ. I thank everyone for being here. It's really nice. Uh, if you could hit the like and follow, it helps me out. And why wouldn't you like and follow? Not just because uh, it helps me out, but because how often do you get to mint cryptocurrency, which is what happens when you like my stream, right? It's a form of currency that uh, only you can make and that can only be created by you here, but it has value. I'm not sure what the monetary value is, but it your like and your and your following me has value and it expands my voice. I am just picking my jaw up off the floor here because what seemed to be relatively normal somewhat solid citizen p diddy is up to his fucking eyeballs in shit a major meltdown here in the image of one of the most enduring rap stars but a guy who hasn't put out a whole lot of material we'll check his discography later J jimmy page no longer the weirdest guy on the ill-fated Godzilla 98 soundtrack with P. Diddy doing Cashmere. Is it just me? Is it just me? Or is this some weird stuff? Is there maybe some kind of curse of Led Zeppelin going on here? Where Jimmy Page, or I'm sorry, curse of Godzilla 98 going on here. Where like Jimmy Page, not as much luck since then. Uh, P. Diddy, irrelevant almost completely since then. Uh, the movie of disaster supplanted by better Godzillas. And now we have the Ballad of Puppy Combs. What in the name of God could really be going on here? I mean, this is this is an insane thing. Let's see. Reading further. We will always support law enforcement when it seeks to prosecute those who have violated the law. Hopefully this is the beginning of a process that will hold Mr. Combs responsible for his depraved conduct. An anonymous plaintiff referred to as Jane Doe said in a statement issued Monday. Um well, that was a fine statement for someone who's alleging wrongdoing, but not a very good statement from law enforcement. So we're 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 still seeing at least lawyers lawyering and writing in a lawyerly way, which is not, you know, uh, blowing our minds. Combs is a rapper, produced entertainment uh, producer and entertainment mogul who has won three Grammys and whose net worth was determined to be close to one billion dollars by Forbes in 2022. Wow, and that's. Uh, $20 billion? Fact check. Has P. Diddy been arrested by the FBI? Newsweek. The raid on Sean... The raid on... Oh boy, the uh, the flashing garbage that pops up on screen here is just really hard. The raid on Sean P. Diddy Combs' house is in homes in Florida and Los Angeles on Monday marks the newest development in the beleaguered rap mogul's legal woes. Wow. Did R. Kelly inform on him? Where's this shit coming from? So he got accused um, of some kind of like of, of acts, including assault, and somehow it, it percolated up to Homeland Security. I I don't know. Is anyone else? Uh, it's shocking to me. Um, for one thing, it's been a long time since I I uh, I have heard about P Diddy or any, doing anything relevant except just kind of being a celebrity. And like, what does he do? Does he walk around freestyling? What does Mister Diddy do with his time these days? Associated with the late, great Biggie Smalls, who really did have talent and really did know how to mix some music, producer uh, P. Diddy was a lot better than rapper P. Diddy, but rapper P. Diddy had enormous success. We saw this. We had enormous success for kind of a long time. And thanks, everybody. Did anyone else come in that I may have missed? Hello, Melvin Deeply. How are you doing, man? Uh, good to see Edward Bevington, too. Hello, Edward Bevington. <laughs> yeah. P diddling is right. People are that's that's what's trending on uh, Twitter. I wake up this morning and I'm so busy being scammed by T-Mobile that I missed this major development in the news. Like I saw it, but I didn't have time to run it down. So we're doing homework together, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, homework together. 
I, uh, we're going to find out and research this. Uh, it's a study party. Uh, we're going to find out what's going on with P. Diddy. P. Diddy dropped off the radar around 2008. I, for one, applaud this. Now, while I say dropped off the radar, I don't mean he hasn't been around. He might have done a Super Bowl. He might have showed up here and there. He might have gone out and been photographed. But for the most part, keeping a lot more quiet because he had a bunch of fucking problems, um, including things that revolved around him hanging out with Jennifer Lopez, right? So we're talking P. Diddy here. Don't confuse him with uh, with Russell Simmons, all right? Uh, th there is some similarity in their, in, their, in their life story. They're from New York, both of them. Um, uh, both of them associated with rapping because, uh, uh, as you may or may not know, Russell Simmons' brother is uh, one of the members of Run DMC, uh, one of the surviving members of Run DMC. So, like, you know, don't confuse the two. Sean Combs is not Russell Simmons. Uh, Combs, also known as... And by the way, this is much better stylistically. That ABC Disney report that we read, that Disney owns ABC, they called him P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, and then finally said Sean Combs, also known as... Then they used the term HSI three times and then explained what it was in paragraph five. This was a disaster of an article from ABC News, but we're getting a little bit better as far as stylistically. It seems like they had their facts. And isn't it a shame in the 21st century where it's all about beating other people to the punch, getting the story out as quickly as possible, as quickly as possible, that uh, we have these terrible misspellings and problems. It's all good, amigo? Cool. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, you know what? Um, I'm so glad that you stopped by, and it's an honor that you're all here. We're we're um, sitting here, sort of. I mean, I'm stunned, and this is just such a modern story. P. Diddy Combs, formerly known as formerly also, I like how he's formally also known as Puff Daddy. He has really muddied the waters as to who the fuck he is. He's is the founder of Bad Boy Records and a three-time Grammy winner. Yeah. Um, in recent months, he has faced several legal battles with lawsuits accusing him of, wow, sex assault and trafficking. So that explains Homeland Security. That's why they're involved in it. This is a story for ICE. Following raids on Monday, videos appeared on TikTok. Wow. Claiming that Combs had been arrested. That's how we get our news now. Wow. We have fallen to a nation of just TikTok addicts. That's, that's what we do for news in America. We go to TikTok. Uh, I wish I could say I was surprised. And I wish I could say that my mouse is working, but it is not. So we're going to have to try to use some manual controls here to get this fixed. And wow, what a disaster for P. Diddy Combs. He couldn't look worse. He has pulled one too many rabbits out of the hat or whatever he's done. And uh, I, for one, honestly, like I never thought, wow, look at, you know, strong, upstanding citizen P. Diddy. But I also was never uh, of the impression that that he was... Uh, this crazy, and it looks like this happened almost a day ago, 20 hours ago, 16 hours ago, so no one sat down to correct these articles that are written so poorly. I saw they seem to be to focus on a man on a man cave out outshed at his at back of his property from footage. Okay, yeah, it said in the report I read there are searching between cushions at this poolside couch and stuff like that. So um Maybe he had a treehouse of horrors kind of place to hang out in his own backyard where he would see what, what's going on. Let's see the most recent one. Six minutes ago. Holy shit. Prince Harry named in $30 million Sean Diddy Combs sexual assault lawsuit. This is exploding, ladies and gentlemen. This is like entertainment news happening right now. I am absolutely flabbergasted on this one. Six minutes ago. Uh, according to the Independent, so take it for what it's worth, uh, the Duke of Sussex has been named in a $30 million lawsuit against Sean P. Diddy Combs, who, which, has, which has accused the rapper of sex trafficking and sexual abuse. Combs, who faces a litany of sexual assault allegations, is said to have drawn guests to his infamous parties through his VIP associations with celebrities such as famous athletes, political, political figures, artists, musicals and international dignitaries like British Royal Prince Harry, according to the legal notice, the 73 page lawsuit was filed by, was filed by record producer Rodney Jones last month and accuses the billionaire of a, of, of being a serial sex abuser. Holy shit. 
There is no suggestion of any wrongdoing by the prince, and his name is only mentioned once in the documents as an example of well-known celebrity figures. Guys, I'm going to be honest with you here. This is a problem that we see in modern society. We just found someone sensationalizing news by making a headline. So Prince William is just someone who's associated with being inside, like, he's been in the home, okay? So here's the thing. This is sort of when you've taken up a life of crime, the life of criminess, your criminal nature, it sort of cuts across everything, right? And also, like, once you become really, really crimey, which it looks like people um, around P. Diddy are being accused of doing, or if not P. Diddy himself, it, once you become deeply crimey and you're not being honorable, uh, you are really, really, really opening yourself up to a lot of problems. One, you're very easy to frame or, you know, uh, get rid of. If you are, a, if I was to try to imply today, um, let's see, uh, Mel Edward Bevington says, I recently came to learn of secret tunnels under the, under the Playboy Mansion could be anything else. Um, I believe that there are probably uh, like secret in the sense of like we like half wasn't into telling people about them passages underneath the Playboy Mansion and God knows what they got used for. They honestly with with something like that, they could have been installed for for like the maid to get around without being seen and then gotten retest for something else. Because I think we all know that the Playboy Mansion of old was some sort of a anything goes area. But holy shit. So uh, Prince Harry, Prince Ginger. Doesn't seem to be in any trouble. But they're bringing up his name, and wow, it's just what what they call the shotgun legal approach, a 73-page legal uh, merit, uh, brief uh, uh, filed against P. Diddy. Charges filed, uh, not a brief, but actual charges uh, filed against P. Diddy. Uh, there is a lawsuit. Uh, there is uh, Homeland Security activity going on and a lot of other stuff. Holy shit. I would not want to be Puffy Combs right now. So let, we'll we'll check in on that in a few minutes and things clear up. More pleasant news. A happy birthday to our pal, Leonard Nimoy. And let's just remember, one of the greatest Star Trek actors, if not the greatest Star Trek actor, one of the three greatest Star Trek actors with William Shatner uh, and DeForest Kelly. So. In honor of him, I'll just say, we're assembled here today to pay final respects to our honored dead. And yet it should be noted that in the midst of our sorrow, this death takes place in the shadow of new life. The sunrise of a new world, a world that our beloved comrade has seen fit to nourish. And we will not debate his wisdom at these ceremonies. Of my friend, I can say only this. Of all the souls I've met in all of my journeys, his was the most human. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Right, is James Horner's version of that not the best? That saved a wretch like me. Play that on the bagpipes when I go out. Hell, Leonard Nimoy, one of the greatest Star Trek actors of all time. One of the many people's favorite Star Trek actor and a beloved presence. Um, let me check on the dates of this and see if he would have made it to 100. I think he was somewhat younger than William Shatner. Um, Leonard Nimoy, unfortunately he had, and, and I beg all of you guys who do this to, uh, to reconsider this course of action. Leonard Nimoy was taken from us early because he smoked. He had quit smoking. Now he would be 80. He was 83 when he died. So he had a decent run. He had quit smoking a while before he died. He probably considering the fact that he was 83 years old when he left us nine years ago, 92. So he was just a little bit younger than Shatner within a few months. It seems, you know, like we could have still had him. Medical technology has progressed. They do say it was um, James Horner. Yes, I love. Um, I have to say, I loved that Star Trek made it to the movies. I was too young to appreciate the highly cerebral nature of the first Star Trek movie. It really is just very, it's a very smart movie. 
It's not, it's, it's not necessarily for children. It's not not for children. There's nothing nefarious going on. It's not, it's not unseemly. But, you know, the, the level of aptitude you need, like, that was a really long conversation with my uncle to explain exactly what, what, what why, what V'ger did was and why V'ger did what V'ger did and, and why anything would act like V'ger and blah, blah, blah. Well, you, you can imagine the questions a kid would have. But, you know, I was a little bit older when I saw Wrath of Khan and just like that, that, that opening moment where it was like, it's like all of a sudden everything we'd been through as star trek fans for the for, for the first time in a while felt like well paid off we were happy to get the first movie but wrath of khan really there might not be a finer sci-fi movie ever made i mean people might want to say empire strikes back empire strikes back doesn't have uh, the kind of death of a beloved character that Wrath of Khan had. And uh, that resurrection didn't come cheap or easy. We trade a life for a life. We have to use a lot of, like, every single ounce of Star Trek lore deployed to try to keep that from tanking out or being a problem. Star Trek 3, probably, hey, Sci-Fi Mombi, hello and welcome. It's good to see you. Star Trek 3, probably a good example of uh, how, how you can do damage control to your franchise and save your franchise without having to, uh, to, to really um, diminish what you've been up to because let's face it, Wrath of Khan, a great movie coming hot on the heels of a movie that was great, but maybe a few too many people uh, didn't understand uh, or weren't really ready for at the time it, the director even was a little confused on how to make Star Trek. But let's let's get his image up here. Let's let's share this picture of the great Leonard Nimoy, uh, Spock. Is it Nimoy or Nimoy? I don't know. I do know that the Trade Federation aliens from Star Wars, the Nimoydians, they were named for Leonard. So way to go, George Lucas, at least on that one. George Lucas, before you were taken over by the pod people. Anyone else find it weird that Spock and, McC and Kirk's birthday are just days apart? Just days apart. It looks like they're like a year apart, but just days apart. Yeah, rest in peace, Leonard Nimoy. Edward Bevington, tractor beam on that new stuff. Straight into the sun with it. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Melvin Deeply is saying, uh, I think there's only been a few days between their birthdays. Nimoy's birthday is today. And Shatner's was uh, March 22nd, the day the Ghostbusters movie came out in America. And Wow. That's another surprising story. Who out there saw Ghostbusters? If you did, um, I think what I'll do is I'm going to devise a poll for you to uh, to tell me whether you've seen it or not and uh, where you like it. So let's see. Where where you at with Ghostbusters is going to be my poll. So where where you at with – and that's not a misspelling. I'm saying this in New York. Where you at with – where you at with the Ghostbusters – Frozen effing frozen fucking empire. Am I allowed to put fuck into the poll? I don't know. Frozen Empire. Where are you at? Where are you at with this movie? I'm gonna ask right now. We're gonna give you three choices that seem fair. Choice one is seen it, liked it. Uh boy, this is just really difficult to edit. I'm having a case of the Mondays on Tuesday. So, seen it and like it is choice one. That seems pretty good. We'll see it soon. Um, Sorry, don't like it. And four, ain't seeing it. Ain't gonna, ain't got, ain't got time for that. Let's do this all in New York. All right. The poll is live now. Your choices will be recorded. Uh, this tribute to Leonard Nimoy was written uh, around the time of his death. Did Leonard Nimoy ever use double negatives in conversation? Did he need to consult his cell phone calculator to figure out the tip at a restaurant bill? Did he understand who put that wormhole in space in Interstellar? Most of the world might assume Nimoy possessed a mind beyond possible mistake and, and beyond melding. For half centuries since the premiere of the classic space fantasy Star Trek in 1966, the actor was informally regarded and greatly loved as one of the most rational beings on the planet and maybe in the galaxy. 
All right. If mankind were to evolve further, Nimoy, who died Friday at the age of 83, yep, would be a good model. Nah, not bad. Yeah. Some high level science agency might even consider deconstructing his genetic sequence. They'd at least have to, they'd at least, uh, they'd at least decode a principled actor who transformed what could have been a life of typecasting into a prosperous, admired, and dignified career. That's true. A lot of people might have just been destroyed by playing Spock. Uh, we've seen people kind of get pigeonholed and not being able to do things. Um, trying to think of someone. We don't see the guy from Smallville much, do we? Um, he seems to have gotten pigeonholed. Superman's a role that will re wreck you up. Um, you, you can change your vote. You're not seeing Ghostbusters. Uh, you can change your votes in these polls. I'm fairly sure. Melvin, you're a wrench for a critical drinker. So um, I think what I have to do is give you one here, too. Did I make sure to get one? To you? you have a wrench. Cool. Uh, I want to, I'm promoting you. Um, when I, between, after the show, I'm going to promote you to plus one wrench, Melvin. Uh, you, uh, you, you have a prestige beyond my ability to calculate and where's our RTNZ? It's only, um, it's only set. It's what? Five 30 in the morning. He's not up yet. Where's our RTNZ? But it's good to see everybody. Uh, Zachary Quinto. Yeah. He may have got pigeonholed. Although, um, here's the thing. There's more of him doing American horror story than there is of him doing Spock and he's doing American horror story every year. So in that, like his character is in every season. He's one of the few people who goes from season to season or he's in most seasons, right? He's in more than one season of it. I don't know if he's always the same guy. I've watched some American horror story. Not a lot. The one that took place in New York, I was like, Oh cool. American horror story made it to New York. Let's check this out. It was okay. The performances were all really good, but the story, you know, not as good as others. Uh, it was really hard for me to determine American Horror Story New York, whether or not they were trying to say the government created HIV on Block Island, which they substitute in for being um, Fire Island. Fire Island is off one shore block island is off another the only thing they have in common is that they're both near long island okay long island stretches out to the east from the east coast of long island running roughly 100 miles it includes the boroughs of brooklyn and queens and you know it also includes the hamptons where uh shooting shooty guy uh alec baldwin lives uh the rich and famous of new york go to parts of long island in general, the North Shore, a little bit more well-regarded than the South Shore. Uh, the North Shore is on a sheltered bay known as Long Island Sound. That's where Block Island is. Uh, Fire Island is off the South Shore in the ocean. The South Shore of Long Island is an ocean. And that was one of the coolest things about growing up here. And, you know, um, I like where I live. That's that's all uh, I can say about that. But uh let me see uh, if I can catch up with some of these chats. You guys are contributing with great stuff, but I could not figure out what was going on. Um, um, can you? Were you able to change your vote? Guys, let me know if the votes can change. So I thought you can. I can't vote in this one, so I'd have to find another uh, another person running a poll to, to vote and change it. But we got some people hanging out, and it's cool to see Sci-Fi Sith Dan. How you doing there, buddy? Uh, you got another show coming up, I think, on the 30th. Uh, sci-fi Sith Dan is a channel member and a pal. Uh, we talked the other day, we talked BSG and, uh, it's good to see you all, but let's just go, uh, by the power of gray skull. Does that mean you transformed your vote? And I said, hello to sci-fi and Alec Baldwin, AKA manslaughterer McGee. Yeah. Right. He was playing character McPerson in his show, uh, uh production Mc McProgram that rust story. The fact that he thought that that was a story that, quote, really needed to be told. Ugh. It was the story of the last time they legally hung a hanged a minor. Um, this guy had some kind of, I don't know how much due process he, ha he had or how legal it was, but they hanged a, a, a minor legally in like 1898 or 1901, some kind of shit like that. And uh, Alec Baldwin decided, hey, you know what? Let me make my pet project, this shitbag movie that no one wants to see. Uh, and I'll make a bunch of money off of that. And uh, everyone will be really, really happy uh, to see my piece of shit movie. 
I wonder what these guys are doing. Off the sound. Uh, well, they are not getting their ad shown for free. Oh, they know how to get most of their ad shown for free. All right, well, we'll just show the top of the ad while we wonder about this. I don't know. Um, I, I'll just say Baldwin, an idiot, he would not be on Fire Island. If you saw a Weekend at Bernie's, that's Fire Island. That's off the South Shore in the ocean. Off the North Shore in the sound is what's called Block Island. Block Island, like you can't really go to it. And there's another island very close to Block Island. Um, Block Island is like now been transitioned over, if I'm not correct, like Billy Joel and other super rich people live there. It's like really, really small. It has like one bar. You go there, everybody there is wealthy. Um, there's no, nothing goes there. So I guess the really, really rich people can walk their dogs and only see other rich people. But um, there are other islands in the sound. And you would want them in the sound rather than in the ocean because the sound is the sheltered water between the North Shore of Long Island and the South Shore of New England, uh, you know, Connecticut and Rhode Island. Uh, you know, And there's some more New York up there, too. If you go uh, and make a left as you head north and head back west, you'll, you'll hit more New York. But you would want something like what they implied existed in the sound because Long Island Sound is not going to get destroyed by a hurricane the way something at the ocean will be. And your chances of evacuating it are much greater. You got that much more lead time. Um, Long Island Sound, not known for being that terrible or unpredictable. Uh, however, if you go due north of Long Island, it's Lyme, Connecticut. Okay, so we know what, what disease comes from there. My buddy who lives out in Suffolk, uh, he had like six different kinds of tick-borne diseases. So the Long Island Sound is small enough that birds can kind of fly from one side to the other and bring airborne diseases and problems like ticks. Tick-borne diseases will jump the sound. At any rate, they seem to have wrapped all that up into American Horror Story New York. They took Block Island, Fire Island, and the weird government island where they do testing, and they sort of combine them into one island. They refer to it as Fire Island, but it's really not. No one's on vacation hanging out there or having fun. What's going on is there seems to be uh, like some kind of crazy orgy. And, um, and hey, thanks for the emojis. I always appreciate them. Uh, was that for, 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 for production McShow or character McPerson? Character McPerson is someone that I could see Alec Baldwin writing. I, I could see him coming up with that. What is up with Alec Baldwin? How is he so fucking stupid? Um, I'll never forget the day many years ago that I walked in to buy a bag of weed at my friend's place in Wontaw, and there sitting on the couch smoking a joint was Stephen Baldwin, of all fucking people. And, you know, kind of knew who he was, but he, you know, this is like before Sliver, but, you know, after Alec Baldwin is like a pretty big star. And, you know, this is New York. You know, you do run it. It's a very, very compressed area where you'll run into famous people. In this case, I didn't run into a famous person. I ran into someone who's almost famous. <laughs> That's a good title for a movie. Almost famous, who um, managed to uh, be become somewhat more relevant as time went on. But uh, you know what? Then they became irrelevant again. But Stephen Baldwin is sitting there on my friend's couch, smoking a joint. And so I was like, hi. And he's like, oh, hi, how are you doing? I'm Stephen Baldwin. And... My friend, the pot dealer, walks. I was like, "Shut the fuck up, Stephen." He obviously knows who you are, and uh, he was just like, "This is my friend Stephen. We went to high school together. He thinks he's somebody because his brother's an actor." And he goes, "I'm gonna be an actor too." And my friend Tom goes, "Shut the fuck up, Stephen. You didn't get hit in the throat by a baseball playing little league, so you don't have a cool voice like your brother. You're never gonna be a great actor." And he just kind of looks at the floor, and I'm like, "Bro, you might be a notable actor. You're, you're gonna go somewhere." Maybe one day you'll be one of those usual suspects people call up to, uh, you know, fill a certain role. And he's like, he's right. I don't have the voice. I sound like Barney Rubble. And then, you know, the rest is history because Viva Rock Vegas, better than the Flintstones movie. But yeah, Alec Baldwin, well, Shooty McJerkoff. Um, you know, how come no one's memed this yet? Is it too mean? Biodome Baldwin is Stephen Baldwin. Exactly. It's like, we love you guys. Is he also is he also in Hey Dude Where's My Car? I don't know. And was Hey Dude Where's My Car written by the Bill and Ted people? Because it certainly seems like it. And I think I've given these people enough free commercials. They are just not going to show us anything worthwhile about our pal Leonard Nimoy. But a happy birthday to Spock, Leonard Nimoy. It was great. I saw the Critical Drinker the other day, and he was talking about 
Kingdom of Heaven with EFAP, right? They recently did King of Heaven, a movie that we watched here. I watched it with Appian. What an enjoyable experience. They had added so much to the movie. And Shad was having the same revelation I was. Uh, he was like, oh, I didn't like this movie when I saw it. And then, like, Drinker's like, is this not a different version? And I saw it in the movies. And then Chad's like, oh, I don't remember that. And what happened is at some point, um, and this is the physical media thing. In this case, it pays off because the movie they gave you and is, in my opinion, better than the, the, than the one that they took away from you. I bought Kingdom of Heaven Director's Edition in like 2000 and whatever, nine or 10, whenever it came out, 2006 when it came out. And um, I did realize that Orlando Bloom was pretty impassive and had a limited range of expressiveness. But the thing was, they surrounded him by so many great actors that the movie kind of still floats. Like David Lewis, good actor. Uh, Liam Neeson, good actor. I don't know if I would call his performance in this movie fantastic, but it's not bad. Is he a little tuned out as Godfrey to Vibble? He's just like, please give me the Obi-Wan treatment so I can die. And, uh, you know, it's like some of the dialogue, it's it's late Ridley Scott, um, you know, and, and people just aren't that big. And we got seven votes in our poll. It looks like seen it, liked it is 14%. We'll see it soon, 71%. Sorry, don't like it. No one feels that way. Ain't got time for that uh, is got 14 percent and this is like goes with stuff like our pal radioactive provided me with the, the echo light and it was ha fun hanging out with radioactive he made his debut uh for the first time here everybody who comes to the member meetings knows uh radioactive but you know what um we still never had debuted him to the world at large till last night we had what i would call an absolutely incredible conversation uh, he's a man uh, with military provenance. Uh, he was uh, an officer in our nation's military. I'm not comfortable telling you more than that personally, but he'll be back to tell you more about it. But um, let's see, Melvin Deeply uh, heard good stories about the director's cut of Kingdom of Heaven. I'm going. I'm told it's a hundred times better than the original release. It is so much better than the original release. That's it. Well, first of all, the first. This is not. I don't think this first director's cut, or it's not the first special cut. There was a special edition. Like that was longer, but it didn't include another storyline. There's another fucking storyline that they chopped the fuck out of the kingdom of heaven that we know. I will not spoil much, but since that storyline runs through most of the movie and exists, I will simply acknowledge that that is what it is. Those of you who want to preserve it, I understand Come back in about two minutes. I'm not going to tell you how that storyline ends. I'm not going to tell you what happens, but, Eva Green's character, the wife of the guy who is going to inherit the throne of, of the kingdom of Jerusalem, once Edward Norton, that's Edward Norton in the Iron Mask, uh, and he does a great job, and he does a great voice. It doesn't sound like him. Uh, he does a good Shakespearean in that. I thought that all the performances were good. It was things like the dialogue was bad, and, and Orlando Bloom's performance was only good for Orlando Bloom. They, he, he just plays it real stoic. He's just like, all these horrible things happen. They chop his wife's head off. They steal his shit. They've got, he kills his own stepbrother. It's the guy from Underworld. Uh, and, and it's just like, he's always impassive. Uh, and it's something I only noticed after uh, people like Drinker and Mauler pointed it out. And that's one of the things I pledge myself to as uh, your entertainer is that I'm going to keep getting better and I'll learn from my betters. I mean, I've learned stuff like I did think that it was a little strange, but it didn't register strongly enough. Part of it probably was because the last time I really gave a deep watch to kingdom of heaven, I wasn't, uh, you know, doing reviews yet. And the other part would be, I was ready to forgive the movie for the spectacle, the spectacle and the combat in kingdom of heaven are great. All right. So you've had enough warning. There will be no spoiler, but I will acknowledge the cutout storyline. So if you've seen the movie, this won't surprise you because something really was missing. Here's the missing storyline, guys. Here's the deal. In Kingdom of Heaven, the missing storyline is this. Guy de Lusignan, played by Javier Bardem, and uh, the, his wife, who is the sister of the King of Jerusalem, played by Edward Norton, uh, she actually has like a 10-year-old. And it's real weird. We know it's not the half-brother of um we know it's not the half brother of of um Orlando Bloom's Ballion of Ibble because it said 
that there is no way for um, Liam Neeson to have children because he once got shot through the testicle with a fucking arrow and fought for two days. Um, that sounded fucked up. He couldn't have had some other way. Uh, he couldn't have said, since I took ill after the battle of whatever, uh, you know, things, you know, uh, before that I was prolific and had several children, although uh, they met with uh, various ill fates in this world. And then I became unable to have children as far as I can tell. And uh, you know what? Uh, the last thing that I did was uh, I was responsible for you. There's there's a conversation between Ballion of Ibble and his brother who stays behind at uh, wherever it is that Orlando Bloom lives, presumably England or, or, or somewhere in France. And uh, it's just it, the... the um, Beginning is, is is really messed up. There's a lot more in there than there there should be. Although I think it's accurate as far as the way they viewed religion. I think Shad was just you know he was just like oh, I don't know what Catholic doctrine was at that point, but you know what? Yeah, I suppose they're all Catholic. And uh, Drake was like, "Isn't it a bit uh, brutal to be doing that though? Right in front of them, it's just sort of like they're rubbing in his face." And everyone's just like, "I don't recall this, and I don't recall that." Okay, here we go. The eliminated storyline with no ending. I'm not going to spoil it, but the eliminated storyline is basically this. Valian of Ibble's girlfriend, who used to be the girlfriend of his dad. So that's pretty weird and a last crusade sort of thing right there. There is yet another person in play, the child of Eva Green. And apparently the father of that child is Guy de Lusignan. His uncle, his mother's brother, is um the king of jerusalem he has really bad leprosy leprosy is spread by proximity to the person who has it and thank you so much by the way rumbles down today more on that later i guess it was p diddy but like anytime there's a major news event you can just forget about logging on to rumble um it's really like i have to do my seven to twelve minutes of struggling to to uh to link up the rumble like the night before from now on, just to get that going. And even then, it's not a total guarantee it's going to work. Rumble, certainly a great outlet to be broadcasting to if you're doing two different, um, you know, if you're splitting your stream, and I almost always do. But it's really a fallback plan for me, and uh, I really do still am dedicated to the people who like the freedom of speech and the rumble on rumble. Hard to grow there. Hard to grow. I have put on almost 800 sub, uh, people to the channel since I started about 14 months ago. I have put on 111 people on the channel since I started uh, on on Rumble about 11 months ago. So, you know, much slower growth on Rumble. And R people are saying outright that they like Rumble, but they won't bother with the chat. So right, now, right there, you're really kind of killing one of the reasons Rumble exists is for freedom of speech. Uh, so it was March 26, 1931, was the birthday of Leonard Nimoy from West End, Massachusetts. Considered a bad neighborhood, but really not as bad. Well, actually, no, West End. It's, it's, the, it's, uh, it's Southern. It's Southern um, West End, Boston, I'm guessing, is the name of the town. But West End, Massachusetts, it's the south side of Boston that's considered bad. Um and by that, I don't mean terrible. I mean, it's just like it's considered a little crimey um, and maybe a rough neighborhood to grow up in. But, you know, they say that about New York's Hell's Kitchen and New York's uh, Jamaica, Queens. And I'm from there. So let me see what we got going on. Um, Sith Dan got my email, buddy. OK, so Mr. House Party Six talking. Uh, he covered Roadhouse the other day. Um, I covered Roadhouse with Tom Connors and um, and and pop culture minefield with Gary Cassell. And I had a good time like getting their take on it and listening to what they had to say. It is a fun movie. It's a good movie. And I don't think it wasn't a deal. They didn't realize that dirty dancing's kind of in the pipeline and about to blow up. So this movie is being made at the same time, but uh, certainly uh, Kelly Lynch uh, being in dirty dancing helps that one. But um, I know Kelly Lynch, is she in both? She's definitely in, uh, is she, is she the doctor in roadhouse? And Roadhouse, it's just like Roadhouse, like they take Days of Thunder and Ro they take they take Top Gun and Roadhouse and sort of combine them together, and you got Days of Thunder. Uh, and, and like I don't know if that's uh yeah, David Thewlis is great. He almost saved, he almost saves um he almost saves the movie, and it wasn't savable. 
The Island of Dr. Moreau, if anyone's familiar with that. Thulis does a good performance in that. He's very enjoyable, but he's just not able to pull it off. Uh, eight votes, cool. People are more participating in the uh, in the uh, in the poll. Now, this is written in New York. Were you at, where are you at with Ghostbusters, Frozen F and Empire? Seen it, liked it. It's at 12%. We'll see it soon. Still hanging at 75%. Uh, saw it, don't like it. Ain't got time for that. And at 10 votes, we're at eight now. At 10 votes, I'm going to suspend that. And I'm going to ask the reason why the people who will see it soon, because you're the biggest group. Why? You, what you waiting for? What you waiting? What you waiting? What you waiting for? Isn't that like Gwen Stefani? I don't know. I'm in a musical mood today. What can I tell you guys? I feel I feel happy. It's beautiful. I look outside. I see the sunlight. I only spent an hour wasting my life on the phone with T-Mobile. Once again, they put out their Major League Baseball deal. All you can watch uh, without anything, you know, uh, interfering with it. And by the way, I would say who has more product in their hair in Roadhouse? Uh, Kelly Lynch? Or Patrick Swayze. A shame about Swayze. We lost him young. I don't know if he smoked too. He might have just had bad luck. Heard good stories, but the director's kind of king of heaven. I'm told it's 100 times better than the original release. I don't know about 100, but the thing is that it's short. You can't fix the performance by Orlando Bloom, which Drinker and Mahler and Rags, they they won the day on that one. It's just like he's expressionless a lot of the time. And um, Eva Green might be the best actress doing the best performance in that whole thing. It seemed to be like it was the way the director's cut comes out. Bailey and Abibble's a major character in it, but but she's got like 50 to 51% of this movie, 49% at the least. She has a son with Guido Lusignan, and something that was set up earlier and never comes back to us is paid off. Bailey and Abibble says before he's killed to uh, his son, um, to, uh, Godfrey Abibble says to his son, Bailey and Abibble, uh, Liam Neeson says to Orlando Bloom, uh, Taken says to Legolas, he's like, uh, you know, um, you've got some land in the Holy Land outside Jerusalem. I didn't do a great job of it. And, uh, I know the king uh, since he's a little boy. And when uh, I was the one who discovered he had leprosy because he burned his arm pretty bad and he didn't even react. He didn't feel it. So, like, my thought was, Okay, you know, and then we find out the king has leprosy, but that was like just outright said. So I'm like, what's going on here? At any rate, it turns out that his nephew now ha uh, burns himself about halfway through the movie. And Eva Green spends most of her time in the movie trying to figure out what the right thing to do with Balian's. I'm sorry, with, with Guy de Lusignan's son. At least it seems like it's Guy de Lusignan's son. Because we know that Godfrey of Ibble can still fuck. He just apparently has decided, and this is pre-medical stuff, that he can't have children. So it starts rattling around in your mind. And thanks, everyone who's here. Did I miss anyone coming in? Melvin Deeply's been chilling for a while. It's an honor to have Melvin Deeply here. The Tetrarch, it's an honor to have all of you, but the Tetrarch has arrived. Hello, lurking now while driving, heading to the dentist's office now. God, I hope it's just a cleaning buddy. I just I went through dental pain the other day. It was no great pleasure, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you what it's and uh, let's see. Um, Phantom Outsider is hailing Melvin Deeply. Mr. House Party Six hails Phantom Outsider. Melvin Deeply, it's like the naked gun. Getting your nuts bitten off by a Laplander. That's how I want to go. <laughs> it's also like naked gun in the sense that like it's accidentally comical the way the first movie just is made to look by the second movie. So the most of the movie and it's cut out, is Eva Green doing some pretty good acting and trying to figure out what to do with her very, very, very in-danger son after she watches her brother die. I googled this. Leprosy is passed by touching in proximity. It would seem to make sense that she would have it and the son wouldn't, but maybe he was just very close to this nephew and loved him. He didn't know any better, which makes it even sadder that Edward Norton accidentally resulted in in infecting his nephew. The nephew absolutely has leprosy. She tests it a couple of times, and then she comes up with the way that she's going to try to set this right after seeing the horrible death and suffering her brother went through. So really, really uh, um, different storyline. Changes the entire character of the movie. I don't know if it's 100% better because the, the storyline they give you, it is a little dark. It is a little fucked up. It's cool that you guys are here. I'm glad to have you. Melvin Deeply saying hi to Phantom. 
and everybody seems to be on very, in a very big good place. Um, let's see. Um, Orlando Bloom has the same problem as Jake Gyllenhaal and Ryan Gosling, I think. Not much charisma. Uh, yeah, not much charisma. But the thing is, like, Ryan Gosling, a little more expressive in the face, and Jake Gyllenhaal, a lot more expressive in the face. But, yeah, the, it's just a little bit. They're, they're not markedly better. I'm trying to think of someone who's better. On the opposite end of the scale, you have someone like Jim Carrey, who's just absolutely his face is just flipping around and he's he's scenery chewing. Or Jeremy Irons, but only in Dungeons and Dragons is Profion. I mean, what the hell were they thinking with that? But let's see. It's as a native of Queens, what would happen? Do I happen to know St. Albans Hospital? I do. I know there's a hospital in St. Albans. I think it might be closed now, though, or be renamed. Let's see if I can find St. Albans Hospital. I am familiar with St. Albans. I know there's, it's now a Veterans Association Medical Center, the St. Albans Naval Hospital in Jamaica, New York. Um, now, if this was the hospital I was born in with a new name, uh, I don't know. Um, it looks like it's gone because this building, this, this picture is really, really old, but it, it started, okay, so dates 1954. They got the location wrong. It says New York, New York. It's Jamaica, New York, but it is in the United States. Um, I've seen this building. This building is familiar to me. Um, so, yes, the answer then would then be yes. Uh, the St. Albans Hospital, as I'm seeing it here, and I'll show you the one I'm seeing. Maybe you can tell me why. You're from Queens? You're from St. Albans? St. Albans is a nice town. The part that borders on the bad part of Jamaica, obviously slightly sketch. You're going to want to be careful there. Russell Simmons from Jamaica. Um, and let's see. Uh, we got nine votes. One more, and I'll be able to close out the uh, the the Ghostbusters poll because I can do the math easier. And, guys, I'm so glad you're here hanging out with me. Um, let's see. Oh, you were born there, Mother's Day, 1970. All right, so um, Mark, we're very close in age. Uh, we we're born less than five miles apart. Um, and uh, hats off to you, uh, and hats off uh, to being another native of Queens, New York. Mark Harkness, I knew there is a reason we are so much on the same wavelength. You know, it's a it's a Queens kind of fucking thing. I want my fucking pastrami on rye with fucking mustard if I'm not having a goddamn pizza. And you know what? The best pizza in the world is in Queens. Some really good pizza in Brooklyn too, but the best pizza in the world here in Queens. But yeah, I am familiar with that with that hospital. I've seen that building. And it's nice to have everybody hanging out. Do me a favor. Tweet the stream out. Let people know I'm live. And uh, let me just say, yesterday, we went with Masters of the Air. We watched episodes 9 and 10. And things that I said were true. If you'd only seen up to episode 8, they kind of dealt with almost all of them. Um, some of them I had to have people uh, simply give me a reason that held up and I'm not closed off. The reason why something makes sense or doesn't, doesn't have to come from me, but uh, I'm not, I, I didn't have to really think too hard on this one. Here's the thing with masters of the air episodes one through three are awesome, but they do have one problem. They're more about being extremely realistic than giving you a cohesive tale or an easy to follow tale, or even that much of a particularly um, linear tale, the war, um, we have a bunch of people drafted or who join up, right? They end up in Europe. Um, and it's good that you said Mother's Day, right? Because then no one can dox you. That's a lot of work to find out when that was. It's not giving the date of birth. So way to go. And different peoples in different parts of the world will get different answers because I think we celebrate it on different days. But Mother's Day, a greeting card holiday, is around by 1970. And you know what? I don't. I, I like that holiday so I, because I'm a little bit of a mama's boy. What can I tell you? Um, one of the only things I got right in BVS, right? I'm talking about every other boy's special lady, his mom. And that's when you realize, oh, my God, Super Stalker doesn't care about his mom at all. He only cares about this Lois chick who he kind of knows. It's not like he's fucking her. I get it. And fucking. And fucking. 
I don't know what to say, but Mark Harkness, a fellow person from Queens, New York, they call that the mark of greatness, Mark. So it's great that that, that uh, you are also from Queens. Explains why you're there and so good with the information. Ten votes. It's scientific. I give you 60 of your Earth seconds before I close the pool. Now, I realize that there's somewhat of a delay between when I hear this and when you do it. So when I close the poll, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I close the poll and then wait a few seconds and then close it. And you guys let me know if it lines up better because gosh knows buffering and all that other stuff comes into this. And we got 11 people hanging out. We'd probably be closer to 20 if Rumble worked, but Rumble, she no work today. And it's been one hour, one hour of Admiral. At uh, one fifty-five, we started this broadcast that I unfortunately had to schedule for earlier. I do apologize. We talked about my problem. We're not going to get back into it. But um, I want to thank everyone who's here. And uh, it's Teague Tuesday, so who knows what we're going to pull off today. Um, I, you're 60 of your seconds. Oh, oh, well, you got another vote? All right. Every time someone votes, I'm just going to give it 60 more seconds. This way, it's not moving the goalpost too much. It's what, what I'm saying is, like, since this isn't a presidential election, um, I have time to indulge you, and we don't have to close the polls at some exact time to make sure that everything's okay. So if anybody wants to get help and uh, – Go ahead there and weigh in with your opinion. I'll give you a couple more seconds uh, because we did just get another vote. So we know that that means that there could be more on the way. Let's just take a look and see if the picture gets any clearer. And I'm sorry, I still have a case of the sniffles that has never, never gone away since I had the coof. Uh, I have had the sniffles every day since then. And I always uh, wake up feeling like it's not too bad. And as the day drags on, man, my sinuses just start congesting up. What a waste of my time. I hate this coof. Um, I don't know what I'll do next, except maybe uh, uh, some voodoo. Uh, throw some chicken bones in the air and ask Papa Legba for some kind of uh, relief from it. But uh, the picture is getting clearer here. We have 11 votes. It's been about 60 seconds. I'll give it about 10 mental Mississippis more. Uh, the time it takes me to run down the results. If you're hearing a bit of a noise in the background, I had to turn my air conditioner on. It's only 48 degrees here in New York, but it's already, it's sick hot in my apartment. It's like 81 degrees, trying to cool it down to 77. There's a thing in New York called ambient heat. The higher up you go, the hotter your apartment is, whether you do anything about it or not. But it is so cool that you are all here. And here's our results so far. Yeah. Uh, where you at with Ghostbusters, Frozen F and Empire? Seen it, liked it, only 9%. We'll see it soon, 55%. That can change. Store it, don't like it, nobody. Uh, 36%. Ain't got time for that. Um, five, four, three, two, one. And I'm ending the poll now. Okay, you guys out there, the poll ended about the time I said it. I tried to uh, time it out. Like, I'm always working. And the other thing I'm always working on, I don't have to work on it much today. It's a little bit of a disadvantage today is my human interaction. Uh, I've been trying a lot harder to be a better panelist when I'm on panels. And... Uh, if you want to hear a great panel, it's doing some gangbuster views, you know, at least for something I'm associated with, uh, blowing up kind of uh, Tom Connors and Gary and a few other people and myself were discussing the the Dune TV series of 2000. Everyone agrees it's the most complete and true to, true to the book uh, version of the story. The weird thing is Frank Herbert was around to coordinate with the first Dune, so it's a little difficult to figure out what it was that he thought was a problem or what he thought was the merits of the first Dune movie with David Lynch or whether he was just like he knew he was kind of close to the end because Frank Herbert's got like 18 months left. And maybe he was just like, I'm going to shut the fuck up, take this money, and uh, prosper. He may not. He may not have been that engaged as to whether he cared or not. He's just like, Oof, who knows if he had the diagnosis? I don't know what he died of. Heart attack, I think it was. But uh, the thing is, we, we, we're we done doomed out with something that we found out. 
But if you go to the community tab of this channel, you will find that there is a link to the last pop culture minefield and it's got everyone on there. I would say this after we did a lot of the stuff about Dune, uh, and I don't speak for a long time. I let everybody disgorge it, but then the conversation sort of turned away from Dune and we were just like talking and joking about Star Trek for a while and stuff like that. And that was really funny. But here's the funny thing about Star Trek and the critical drinker setup, payoff. A mere 25 minutes ago, I set up this joke, and now we pay it off. I was surprised at the part where we saw Cynic Alphadel, Alexander Alphadel, Dr. Bashir from Deep Space Nine. And this is how I expected it to be said. And Melvin, if you're still here, tell me if I got this right. I really expected, and it may have been edited out, but didn't you expect when Julian Bashir came on screen that uh, Critical Drinker would say, was he not in Deep Space Nine? Is that not Dr. Bashir? Like, I thought he would recognize him right away, but maybe that just wasn't part of the Star Trek that he liked. I don't know. Critical Drinker, I'm so happy that he went and watched Star Trek, and my favorite review so far is for Star Trek V, because I think it's just him and Mauler. The other panelists don't take away from it. I really love Mauler. Mauler was my gateway drug to this stuff. I saw Mauler, and I'm like, this guy has got the superior intellect of a film uh breakdown guy and then i found out about drinker who was already well established when they started to work together no, no comment smiles so he did it's not not dr bashir i'm sure he said it man i know i know that in his mind he's what you he, i love the critical drinker for a long time before i found out that he was a big star trek fan and i thank him for going through all those star trek movies but the best one was him and more star trek five because they had a lot to talk about. They still had some positives to say about it. They liked a lot of the performances and stuff, but yeah, I did enjoy that one the most. Check out Critical Drinker. He doesn't need my help, but check out the Critical Drinker for your own edification. I swore myself to the Critical Drinker's advice for YouTubers day one of monetization of this channel, and we showed the video. Don't tell him. I don't want him to strike me, Melvin, but... um. I showed his video, and then at the end, I said, I pledge myself to your teachings. Because rule number one, don't be a dick. <laughs> and he went about how not to be a dick on YouTube. And I got to tell you, he was right. Am I a dick? I'm still a dick. But uh, I'm not as belligerent as other people on YouTube. And I've tried not to be a YouTube dick. Uh, one thing he pointed out, and he bought receipts, was channels that had been big that lost all relevance by fighting. And some of my subscribers are going to recognize uh, that there are there was a recent channel that all they did was fight and attack people. And they went from like uh, just about monetization level down to below step one monetization. So they lost about half their subscribers by acting out. Then they focused on me and they started attacking me every day. They would copy the name of my stream. They would copy my thumbnail. They would put it back up. And they would pretend to be me. People would go there thinking that uh, they were me because they themselves had a reputation that was just a trash fire. And uh, what they just they'd go there, and all of a sudden, somebody would be talking about what a piece of shit tag is. And they would like then after the stream, they would misspell, respell my name wrong so that I would not benefit from it. It was just stealing and poaching my views. It's in the past now, but like if you're going to YouTube, you're going to run into people like that. That channel, all they did was fight and attack people smaller and smaller and smaller rumble channels too you're not immune this is i'm striking out my own now i swore myself to critical drinkers don't be a dick one thing i think he might have been uh right about but is now no longer relevant because this is from about 18 months ago maybe give or take is that he said you know be very careful how often you go live i don't think the idea of the live only youtuber was established and he was talking about his own experiences uh there are live only guys but because of what he said once i got successful being live i skimmed some of that money into uh video editing software hey cyrus don't be a dick cyrus i'm gonna throw you a link so you can join me i think i've ranted on my own long enough it was something i wanted to do but uh, i'm gonna put that link into room 237 uh i have a group chat where i keep uh, panelists and then like the people who are on my 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 council of war the people that i trust the most the people who i rely on for cooler heads when 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 admiral needs advice uh they're in room 237 and in room 237 it's kind of like room 101 like you know uh 
we get uh, there. We go there to see and do things that should never be seen in real life. Uh, I send one to both uh, that and your Twitter, Cyrus. Cyrus, now official co-host of this channel, um, but it doesn't mean that I don't like to go on and get ranty. Cyrus, I hope you had a good workout. And if you don't have time, I get it. Let me see. We'll go back in the chat there. Don't be a dick. Yeah, the drinker is really like, they say Mauler is the voice actor, but drinker, great voice acting. And oh, my God, my friend and co-host is here. Honor Guard, whistle him in, please. Whistle in my good friend Cyrus, commander on this ship. And uh, transporter room, beep him right to the bridge. Don't be a dick. Don't be a dick. Uh, That's one of the greatest lines on YouTube, and plus the accent just makes it awesome. Oh, and you know what? You, I think, were you there or you were just watching when I got monetized? Right? Were you just watching or you were there? I know you participated a little bit. I don't really remember. We've been friends for a while. Our friendship precedes. Uh, you used to produce another program on another network, uh, but uh, you know that's not a big deal. And that was a lifetime ago and another person. But a lot of people may not know this. You and I were friends before that. We met before any of that stuff. We're our mutual acquaintances, none other than Dark Helmet. So uh, I and go Tony way Stark. back with Cyrus and Tony Stark. But the first person I met you with was Dark Helmet, although. Dark Helmet may have introduced me to Stark and you at the same time as far as first-hand meetings. I was already aware of who Stark was from watching and listening. It's to funny. Talk. I heard the little conversation you are having before I joined, how you are talking about the certain channel that got completely nuked from orbit, just to be safe. You know, you got to Right, sure. yeah. We don't want to... Don't name them. Oh, I know. Trust me, I'm not. Yeah. But I've noticed every single person or channel that wants to pick a fight with you, they usually end up getting absolutely annihilated or and I don't fight back. Such criminals themselves. That's like, are you sure you want to? They do have that? to lay. Are off, you yeah. absolutely sure you want to do that? Because you know, you know those texts and those photos. Yeah, Pepperidge Farms remembers, but Pepperidge Farms Pepperidge been Farms to remembers what you <laughs> maybe Pepperidge Farms. Maybe you buy some Pepperidge Farms Milano cookies. <laughs> no, listen, we're not shaking anybody down. We're just saying we'd like to be left alone. And we're not oh, yeah, so definitely. full of ourselves. We're not so full of ourselves that if the pranking ends now, we can't laugh at what happened in the past. But we're not going to give anybody a class in prank school. But I will say this: like I warn everybody, if you want to do this YouTube thing, you better check your head and make sure your shit's correct and tight. If you want to play blood sport and attack people, and I, it's crazy Step how one, well I've done blood sports. Step two: if you do and you've done something wrong, you've messed up. You really fucked up. Don't antagonize the people. And the other thing I'd say is this is playing blood sport. There was a time I got doxxed and everybody, Ooh, but and I mean, everybody thought that it was the same, thought that it was a, per, uh, thought it was a certain person. I can kind uh, of maybe we, point you to something right now. Uh, yeah, Cause you ahead, wanted to do the, the puppet thing, right? Right. Oh yeah. We talked to the floor about the puppet. This isn't quite that. But I okay. noticed this just popped up. You remember how I told you I would tell you that if there's any bundles that I think you might like where you'll pay next to nothing for it, I'd point you to it. Right. Uh, on the Humble Bundle right now is Moho Pro 12. So if you wanted to make like your own animated Admiral Teague or animated puppet oh, Admiral Teague, be something. it's freaking 25 bucks instead of $400. Oh, so that's what I'd be out if I got a puppet? That's an oh no, that's just puppet. a cost of the software. If you didn't buy uh, it, on the, oh, oh, oh. the puppet, I don't know. It depends on how well you want it. About the ceiling, right? Like four, like four hundred is called. You got to consider it deeply. However, if they're saying like we put like a real Commodore Decker logo on this, we put real Star Trek sash on the one arm. You can on the arms, right? And like he's Kermit the Froggable. Every once in a while, you can have him go. Mah! Like when I go crazy, I could like shake the puppet and have his arms flip in the air like Kermit's do. And I think it would be good for my uploads, right? Instead of like putting on a costume with a helmet or a mask and doing the Daft Punk thing. Doomcock's already doing that and doing it great. I, I don't want to like get into his lane. It would be You better. can still do your own thing, even if it's kind of similar. It doesn't matter because it's still you doing what you wanted to do. What I want to do is like something like a puppet. I um, think that this a isn't for would be puppets. Funny. This is for making like your own animated stuff. But technically, if you like, made made, like, like a, platoons, if you make the like animation, the the yeah, you can even do that. Yeah. Whatever you want, you can rig it, and then you can animate it. So you could do your own thing. Can I regardless. trigger the animation? 
yeah, you might have to do it yourself. So I, but yeah. If I, haven't if I really had used I, if it. I had Commodore Decker, right? And one of his famous things is he's holding these two data tapes and roll rubbing them together because he's freaking out. I could have him frozen, right? And every couple of minutes, like he'd blink, and every couple of minutes he'd just like rub the tapes together while he was at rest, right? Then when someone said anything, if they like said something that like was really fucked up, I could have him slap his forehead, right? I could have him slap his forehead, and I could maybe have him like turn into like 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 turn his head and have an angry expression. I could probably do that because the little platoon, um, he takes. Uh, a sip of the wine or he moves the glass around and gestures with the wine and the cigarette uh, of his avatar. And I believe he counts as a vlogger, doesn't he? That's vlogging. Once you do that vlogger, VTuber, whatever you want to really count it as. Yeah. You know, check that out later on. If it looks interesting, grab it. If it doesn't pass on it, no big deal either way. Maybe we'll jump on it after the show and take a look. It's great to see everybody here. Let's see. Um, Look at what Melvin said. Melvin gets it. Melvin is uh, a smart guy, and it's always great when he shows up. But it, not that I love anyone else any less. But, yeah, I love having Melvin here. One day, Melvin, would you ever consider coming on Saving Star Trek? But let's see. Um, Phantom Outsider says his wife in Chapter uh, in chapter House of Dune, I guess, Frank wrote. And we saw earlier, I highlighted it, Frank Herbert died of a heart attack after having pan while recovering from pancreatic cancer. So, yeah, like he was messed up and then something else went wrong. Poor guy. He almost made it, it looks like. Um, his wife, his wife, Admiral Teague, I didn't know I was married to Frank Herbert, but hey, I'll take that money. Uh, guys, there are several checks that need to come my way. In the chapter House Dune, House of Dune, Frank wrote, all governments suffer a recurring problem. Power attracts pathological personalities. It is not that power, but that it is and then you got the second magnetic one, yeah. to corruptible uh, and to the corruptible people, uh, to, to the corruptible. Such people have a tendency to become drunk on violence when a condition to which they're quickly, a condition to which they're quickly addicted. Certain yep. such people become drunk on violence, a condition to which they are quickly addicted, or in this case, the uh, the pornography of violence. And by that, I mean the you know, the definition of pornography is actually an image that evokes an emotion. So, like a Marvel movie is, in a sense, like superhero pornography, right? It's superhero porn. Um, sexual pornography is its own kind of pornography, but it's sort of taken over the popular definition of what pornography means. But, uh, like, for instance, in the movie um, Virtuosity, where people were putting that weird thing on their head, they could record what you saw through your eyes and gave you the same feelings and emotions that the people who were feeling it when they wore it red, uh, when, it, when, when they read it. Um, oh, this does look like a good bundle. If you, like, like, people were doing shit with the, with the goggles on to, uh, to save money. Uh, I'm sorry, to, to, sell the, uh, to sell the experience, right? So people were creating and making sure not to look at their own license because you see what they're see, they, they see, right? Or look in the mirror. So people were creating these, these like, I don't know what to call it, memories. Maybe we're talking, maybe we're talking about memories. But they decided to create these memories. So what you do is like, if you rob houses, you put on like the memory enhancer thing, uh, the memory recorder thing, and the emotion recorder, and people are able to see your emotions and your and your memories, feel, see what you saw, and feel your emotions. So one guy wore one to like kick down the door and burglarize a house. He like it's like doom, right? You see his hand out with like the gat, and then he's like, "Give me your fucking money! Give me your fucking money!" And then you hear like you know this is the police kind of a thing. It's like, "Oh fuck! Oh fuck!" And the cops kick down the door, and you see him run past like a mirror where you do see he's got like a hood on or whatever, you know, covering his face, Just kind of taking that contingency into account. And he runs up the stairs. You see his hand fly out in front of him, pushes open the roof running 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 across the roof and then like someone's like behind him and like he fucks up he tries to jump from one rooftop to the next he makes it to the point where he hits the other rooftop and grabs it but he bashes his face or something and he makes him swoon he loses his grip he falls so far that he writes himself to go down eyes first and it's just like Whoa! splat 
So that's like your four minute video. And that's worth like, say, 600,000 bucks or like 200,000 bucks. What, like, what's the most that an average person could pay for that? Let's say this was democratized, like two video games for the experience of being one high on drugs, two committing a crime with a gun in your hand, three running away from the police and four dying. All of that up to the moment his emotions cut off when he's no longer transmitting because he's dead. Think about what it would be like to put that on and feel that for six minutes. And just to touch on that, since you said that was a nice bundle, that's the place I told you where I got uh, $750 worth of editing and visual effects software for 30 bucks. It so, might be time to buy yeah. some software. I guess I could download it. I think like you can get hard Vegas hard. from there. Whenever they do another bundle, they're more than likely going to do something for editing again. It comes every Vegas self now and then. Self reinstalls like like a PDF reader or something when I put it, when I try to use it. I've made a couple of Vegas things. And it's getting interesting. It's going to be interesting when I can start doing movie reviews. My essays won't be as good as theirs for a while. I have to try to, and my rhetoric will never be as good as theirs. They have a huge lead on me and they're smarter than me to start off with. But uh, I wouldn't just say maybe. that you're going to have the raw computing power pretty soon. Right. Hopefully. But I mean, you just got to get used to the software. That takes like a couple of days. And the intellect and the choices and to develop and to gather up enough, uh, enough, um, what do you call it? Enough, um, four second clips and enough raw video to source from, you know Don't what I mean? Sell yourself short though. Like no matter what, just do it. You'll get so used to it that if anybody was to look at how you do it compared to them, you might actually be doing things a lot faster than they do. Some people just pump stuff out. But if you look at those people, they're usually making a good amount of money on YouTube. And what they're doing is they're paying another guy saying, here's my reaction. Go get clips, do this, put it together, upload it. So they're not the ones doing it. So they don't really have experience anyway. That's the oh, way you got to see just, it. I'm, pu I'm putting together poll number two. What is keeping people from seeing, uh, seeing Ghostbusters Frozen Empire? Because it did all right, but not great. And most people still haven't seen it. Honestly, I'm probably going to wait to buy it on disc. We've kind of uh, we've, we've kind of gotten to that level. You want to you, where you're not that sure. Um, all right, so this the question presupposes you will see this movie, but I'm almost done formulating the poll. It's what what's stopping what stopped you what's stopping what's stopping you guys? We're going to put this in New York again. What's stopping you guys from seeing? Ghostbusters, Frozen, F, and Empire. The weather, the economy, want to hear positive reviews first. And I guess, what would the last one would be? It's so New York that in the back of my mind, I just hear the sound of pigeons. <laughs> Poisoning pigeons in the park. How about that video I showed you where I was going crazy? How? Did, tell the audience, how, how, how much of my New York accent are they hearing compared to how much I really have? It's like the angrier a New Yorker gets, especially when you actually have the accent. Angrier a New Yorker gets, the more that accent comes out. It's like, whoa, they are like true New Yorker right there. Yeah, okay. And that would be when I'm cursing and screaming. All right. So, guys, I think I formulated this correctly. Here's your four choices. And anybody who feels differently, and I'll get back to like highlighting and answering chats in a minute. But I wanted to write this poll, and like I only have one set of eyes. I haven't turned the keys over to Cyrus yet, so that he could do some of the other things for me. But uh, we'll probably do that after today's show. So this is these are uh, your choices here on what what stop and use guys from seeing fr Ghostbusters, Frozen, F and Empire, the weather, the economy. Want to hear positive reviews first, and then I I mashed two things together, uh, the economy demands good reviews first so if you take that one it means that that's now your policy so the poll is now live um what's stopping you guys from seeing ghostbusters frozen f and empire i have a feeling most are gonna select that it uh Four. that they're waiting on the reviews to determine what to do but it's well, how many people will go with my policy is now that the that the economy uh, demands the reviews because I used to just go see a movie willy nilly not giving a fuck about what happened to my nine ten twelve dollars. This is different now, especially if you have kids. If you bring three four kids, 
you're going to have to like find a way to entertain. And speaking of entertaining, uh, Cyrus, do you think that you could uh, to an- you could try to maybe answer or uh, opinionate on one of these questions uh, while uh, Admiral do- absolutely doesn't take a pee? Oh wow! So we have a lot. One person was born on Mother's Day, one part uh, 1970, and Mr. House Party Six was born there on Mother's Day, uh, 19, uh, 1971, one year after Mark Harkness. Guys, everybody loves mom. No comment on to whether the drinker recognized Doctor Bashir. Would you? Are you able to ask him for me? I would like to know. Don't you don't have to tell me the answer, but be like, what a surprise! You didn't recognize Doctor Bashir because oh, that would I could see him. Who showed up? Canadian Spider Man. Good morning. Hey, if you're free, I you want to Canadian swing by? Spidey in a while. Canadian Spidey, you want to sing swing by? It's Teague Tuesday, and we're looking to hang out. Um, don't be a dick. That's your comment. Wrestling's not fake. It's not fake. It's real entertainment. Um, Frank Herbert died of a pulmonary embolism while recovering from surgery for prostate pancreatic cancer. That sucks, right? Um, I'm not sure in earnest but there's definitely but but they're definitely getting hurt in here in there um definitely um that's a joke for the family guy that's uh, that recognized by oh the, the uh, pepperidge uh, farms okay we're going family. back a little bit pepperidge farm remember this yeah that's we posted the gift the other day i think everybody understands that we're going to be okay but like some people just don't understand how to compete in a gentle manly uh nature and that that's the thing right uh what do we train soldiers in our military to be but officer and a gentleman right and like isn't it funny that how some people have felt that the word gentle and the word man are incompatible i would say the greatest men are gentlemen you know what i mean a gentleman that's why they're called gentlemen, gentlemen. they're usually well recognized and well thought of Although, you know, if you cross a gentleman, things usually go poorly for you. You shouldn't cross a gentleman because gentleman also implies that it's a someone of means or someone of intelligence or both. I would say that he is not a very nice guy, but Timothy Dalton in 1923 was like a distinguished gentleman. You know, he had all the manners and refinement. It was so awesome. I had said years ago, why not bring back one of the ex-Bonds to play a Bond villain? Okay, uh... Melvin deeply says, I don't have a channel, but there's a advice I give YouTubers. Go ahead. Based on what I see, you know, you are a wrench for the most successful YouTuber for pop culture of all time. Uh, number one rule. Don't take things personally. Don't get down. Don't bite. It's giving them what they want. Yeah. I'm trying my best not to do that. We're, we're alluding to the fact that we had a problem, but like the most important thing about being a man is to be a gentleman. That's to be a complete man, but you see problems go away when you by. know things. If you want to swing by, come on by for a little while and chill out. And yeah, that's all we'll say on that. We can put that one to, to sleep for now, but yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I just have to put it out there. It's good to see. Is Alabama hellbilly here? Did I miss that? We got a few people who came in. Uh, let me just greet everyone who's here and been here. It's good to see my friend Phantom Outsider, Mr. House Party 6, still hanging out, Sci-Fi Sith Dan, good time there night with him. Um, I don't believe those words are incompatible. They absolutely go together, says Sci-Fi Mambi. Yeah, the best kind of man is gentlemen. Uh, Sci-Fi Sith Dan and Sci-Fi Mambi, good to see them, says Canadian Spider-Man. Greeting everyone. Being the Canadian Spider-Man we love so well. You know what, Canadian Spider-Man? I saw American Miles Morales today uh, swinging by when I was uptown earlier today uh, getting my hair cut and buying some clothes. And uh, he swung by and he said, what's going on, Admiral Teague? And I said, fuck you, Miles. You're not Spider-Man. And he was distracted and hit a street pole. Uh, What can I tell you? Did he tag that street pole on the way down? Only people who were there would know. Uh, a Latino, being a Latino oh, myself, he, all right. high he hit it so hard that he left a streak from his pants. <laughs> ah, listen, um, you know, we all are burdened with our Miles Moraleses. Uh, you know, Argentina has what they call American Miles Morales because that's what he is to them. Uh, you know, uh, Mexico has what they call, um, you know, American Miles Morales, because that's what they call him there. Canada has another guy. There's a Mexican Miles Morales as well. We call him Mexican Miles Morales when he comes to America. The Mexican Miles Morales, who happens to be the Queen's Miles Morales, who's my Miles Morales, is not fucking Spider-Man. Peter Parker or Canadian Spider-Man are legitimate Spider-Man. 
Miles Morales is Miles Morales. And I can we make Spider-Man an American again? Can we please make Spider-Man an American again? At long last, have we no decency? Then when you know when they send us their Spider-Man, they just send us an explosion of Spider-Man. Out of those Spider-Man, we got three Spider-Man in No Way Home. Remember that? I hated about this, one I believe it was the Sony movies. Is every movie for at, the, at least the first three movies, half of the movie was spent saying he yeah, became Spider Man. I was like, maybe do that just for the first. Don't do it for every single movie. Again, you're treating your audience like they're stupid, like they can't remember anything, and like they have to be told every time. It's like, no, 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 we already established it. Let's get to the meat and potatoes. Yeah, like don't re origin them every time. That's like. The only thing I agree with in BVS was that they didn't reorigin Batman. They did it during the uh, opening credits so that people would have an idea of what's going on. Um, do me a favor. Can you uh, tw tweet a pass to Canadian Spider-Man if he wants to use it? This way he has the option. And, I don't uh, have communication with him at the moment. Oh, oh yeah. Well, you the Cyrus is a new uh, Cyrus is a new program uh, of my uh, of my of my uh co-host uh he was known in another iteration um but you know what i have canadian spider-man's info so i will give canadian spider -Man. i will give canadian spider-man the pass and uh yeah does everyone i think everyone agrees by the way that that dune tv show is the best one because for whatever flaws it has it's like a very good episode of star trek as far as production it was like more of the story let's see hell uh, says Mr. House Party Six. Glad it's, it's always good, good to have Canadian Spider Man here. Does whatever a spider can. Can it swing from the thread? But does he have a, a pet spider pig? Overhead in the chill of night with his pet spider pig. What do you think? Oh, he should have. A, that was the best part of that Simpsons movie that wasn't that great. It's the odd that his wife in that, typed in 1984 Herbert Herbert's. Life ended after a long battle with lung cancer. Odd that that didn't show up. Um, it's possible that he had the lung cancer and they were like trying to slow it down, and they don't have the kind of options in '86 they have now. So maybe they're trying to slow down the lung cancer, and at the same time, he, it spread to his pancreas, which means it was that stage three spreading everywhere, right? And I'm sorry for anyone who has to listen to this who is so afflicted or who has someone close to you so afflicted. I do, and I know what it's like. I lost my uh, biological father to cancer this summer, so I'm not being glib. And I absolutely appreciate the uh, emotional toll that it might take on you. So if it bothers you to listen to it and, 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 it, and it's hurtful, please, by all means, protect yourself first. You're not here to, uh, to, to, to be my listener. You're here for yourself. I just I feel really really bad if it's something that happened recently to you but that's that's just the way it is um uh i think maybe and, and we're moving on from it after frank herbert um maybe herbert's cancer had spread to other places so the surgery could have easily still been for the what's going on in this pancreas right and uh they're like you know you won't be functioning if we don't do this it could have been like this tumor needs to come off to keep you alive while we try to beat the lung cancer or or it could have just been that like he was just done like he didn't have much chance so all of that could still be true but like let's just say now it looks like accounts vary and let's see um phantom outsider i got a fifth option i usually see the movies with my brother but the last weekend's birthdays and this easter made where i couldn't go hopefully next weekend we will see the new ghostbusters together all right that is so cool that i'm glad you have a brother that you get along with that great that's that i always kind of wished i'd had a brother i guess which is weird because in a way i have like i think something like two half brothers and uh four uh, and uh and, and two step sisters so i have plenty of siblings but they're not quite my siblings and you know, someone was like, I was hanging out with 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 my with my uh, stepbrother, and someone said to me later, like, "Who is that guy?" I was like, "Oh, that was my stepbrother." And they're like, "That that can't be true." And I'm like, "Why?" And they're like, "Because he's African American." So that was a pretty hard eye roll by me. But the thing I had to respond to them was, "He's not Afri He's not African American," which they said, "Well, you know." Uh, 
he was definitely African-American, judging by his skin tone. And I had to put my head in my hands. And you know what my response was? But he was born in England. So, right? I mean, does it? What, what do you say about someone who lives in America but is a citizen of England who, I mean, does the fact that he has dual citizenship, does that make him a semi-Afro-American? Is he, isn't he an Anglo-American? I don't know. How does that work? And there are, there should be no hyphenated Americans. I'm just a fucking American. That's the problem is there's just too much division. With I'm a blankety blank American. It's like, are you American or are you not? Um, and are you un-American or not? Like, what the fuck is your problem with some of these things we hear from people? I'm going to embiggen you a little bit so people can see you. That's pretty funny. Um, let me update this new layout. It's still pretty cool. We got don't start nothing. Um, we're having fun. Is this is he one of the men in black based on his clothes? Is this from Men in Black or something? Yeah, first movie. Oh, the good one. Yeah. Admiral Teague, where is the link possible to join the panel? Oh, it's that hilarious is when so if I sit then that's only in my advice. group chat. Uh yeah. Um, um you gotta be on, you have to be on uh, in my group chat. Uh, like you, that's why I told you start a group chat to control who can be on and, and who can't. Uh, on my panel, so Cyrus is my co host, so I mean, this is in a way partly his show, which is why he's gonna take it away for a minute and talk about like uh, maybe anything for about one minute where I'm definitely not peeing. Take it away, Cyrus. Oh, you're just having the lubricant leak at an alarming rate. That's all you're having. That's all, nothing else to see here. Okay, looks like we got the usual people I'm not familiar with. Looks like Sci-Fi Sith Dan, but you're a subscriber. Welcome. And it looks like Teague already took that on. So group page, or if you are following him and he's following you, you can message each other. All right, let's see what we got. Looks like everybody had similar feelings about Ghostbusters. Personally, I want to see it. For those of you that haven't seen it as well, I'm just waiting to get it on disc. I got stuff going on. I don't feel like traveling super far to the theater and traffic and accidents and this and that. And I'm getting used to a new area. So in the future, I'll just get it on disc. But it's good that we're covering so many things, even on a show for saving Star Trek. It's more saving pop culture as well. Not a one trick yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. That was a quick fluent leak. It helps to have a really, really small apartment. If I really wanted to, if I leaned really hard towards the uh, room where the toilet is, I could probably pee while live because it's like the apartment. As long as you're small. washing your hands. Oh, I am absolutely washing my hands. One of the things that always freaks me out is when you come out of a bathroom and someone says, like, you know, your hands are slightly damp, and they're like, didn't you wash your hands? And like, they mean it earnestly. Which goes through which what goes through my mind when they say that is, do they not wash their hands because they're unfamiliar with the fact that you don't urinate on your fucking hands? You then what go, comes into my mind all... is like, are, are you, you some kind of stupid? I what what the fuck? It's it, how do you what kind of it's like, and you you have to say it like you're an idiot. It's like, no, my hands are damp because there's no towels in the bathroom and because I won't use the hand dryer. And they're like, why? And I was like. Well, for the same reason, I won't brush my teeth at work. And they're like, why won't you brush your teeth at work? It's like, oh, that air is full of pee and poop. And now, oh, well, that air is that air is filled with poop and pee. And now you've got it on your teeth. Oh, why do you brush your teeth at work? In the words of Seth MacFarlane. I mean, come on. I mean, I never understood that person who brushed their teeth at work. Although, I mean, if you need to brush your teeth, you need to brush your teeth. But when I brush my teeth at work, do you know what I do? You're never going to believe this. You know what I do? Go out to I the leave, car or something? Yeah, I leave. The, well, I don't have a car. But I leave the building. I pull out my toothbrush. I put just enough toothpaste on it, right? I take a sip of water. Uh, I pour a little more water on the uh, toothbrush. Then <laughs> clean off the old teeth, right? Spit, rinse, spit, rinse. And then like, boom, you know, Bob's your uncle. You're good to go. Uh, and if Bob's your uncle's appropriate, I wouldn't know. I think that means everything's okay in British slang. But we have British people here who can maybe help me out with that. Um, both Toby Maguire and Andrew Garfield are also American as well as Nicholas Hammond. I think Andrew Garfield is um, British and Tom Holland is British. Hold on. Let me find out.
Andrew Garfield was born in Los Angeles. California. Andrew Garfield is born in Los Angeles. What's with his regular voice? What's with his speaking voice? What the fuck is up with Tom? Tom out with with. What the fuck is up with Andrew Garfield's speaking voice? He's got two first names and puts on a fake English accent. What the fuck? Tom, Andrew Garfield bio. Andrew Garfield, Andrew Russell Garfield is an English and American actor. He has received, okay, so he moved in. He's like Scully. His speaking voice is British. All right, you know what? You're halfway there, right? He's British and American. I don't know. Um, Cyrus, you decide. I'm going to leave the Cyrus. Does Tom, does, 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 now Tom Holland, he's an outright Brit. Andrew Garfield was born in America, but he's got a British accent and he's from England. Does he count as a full on British Spider Man? Mm. Oh, shoot. That's kind of a tough one. I mean, if you look at just how things allegedly are, I he'd be an that, American. Though. But if we look at every all the information, I'm just going to say British. If you have to Google somebody to find out that if you're child of two Brits, you're a Brit. How about like when I floored the room full of people on there was another show that Cyrus produced that was on. Um, I floored the host when I told them that they're like the, somebody said that Mel Gibson was their absolute hero. And I'm like, well, another great actor from New York. And they started freaking out and yelling at me that I was a fucking idiot because everybody knows that Mel Gibson is from Australia. And I just had to shake my head because if you know a little bit about Mel Gibson, uh, uh, Cyrus, do you know where Mel Gibson was born? Absolutely not. No. Poughkeepsie, New York. He's from New York. He's an American. He could be president. And by the way, Mel Gibson for president. Um, Teague, they sell toothbrushes that have cleaner on them. Yeah, I've seen that. You can brush and spit and throw the one-time use brush away. I've I've used those. Not the worst, but it's more like a super refreshing uh, uh, toothpick. It doesn't totally do the job. I would say that is for flights. That is for flights and right before like the be the most important day of your life. But I've done that. I've owned those. Um, but if I have to actually brush my teeth at work, I leave or go where no, and go where no one can see me and, and do it. Like I said, you know, I, I got a thing about flying on. now. Just due to everything that's been going on. And the last time I went on a flight, I looked at the wing and I had to very, very quietly walk up to one of the employees and say, you know, it looks like that wing is cracking in several spots because I remember one other accident that actually happened because nobody said anything about like right when you walk in the aircraft to the right, all those rivets, it was cracking down through most of them. And how that did they section not got notice that off. and feel comfortable? <clears throat> Seriously, man. How did nobody did else know say that? anything? This is the only thing I could come up with is this. No matter what you do, at some point it becomes a job, which is why we see things like disinterested doctors. You know what I mean? So no matter what you do, at some point along the way, it just it degenerates to it's just a job. And hello, words and pictures. Um, there you have it. Thank you. Lives in your hands. So, you know. But the thing is, at some point, it is just a job. I had a doctor who was just like, um, they had their per their person call me. And they're like, I, I had a test for like uh, like some disease, right? And they called me back with the results, but they wouldn't leave the uh, answer. And so I was like, ah, ah, it took like a week to get back to them. And by the time I got them on the phone, I was like, the fuck, man? I've been freaking out. Am I going to live or not? And they're like, oh, yeah, you don't have it. And I'm like, why? If it's, since it was negative, would it have been bad to have leave it, to have left a, left a, uh, uh, a cryptic enough message like that test was negative? That wouldn't have broken my, uh, at the number that you paid me, where, where, that you, that I paid you to call me at with my voice there, you know, like, what's up with that? Um, and let's see, everyone saying hi to each other. And it's good to see Melvin deeply hanging out with Sci Fi Sith Dan, Mr. House Party Six, DJ Play Nice, Phantom Outsider, Words and Pictures, and everybody just having a good time. I got started this morning at uh, Mrs. Dadman's. She's the one I have to shout out, Mrs. Dadman. If you try out uh, Mrs. Dadman, she's got a great channel. I'll try to fish up the link, but uh, she is really cool, has a good morning show. She's the one who informed me it was Nimoy's birthday. Do I need pre Twitter premium to create my own Twitter community chat group? You might, but here's what uh, um, I'll do. I'll create one for you if you can't, uh, and then you can use it, and I can just hang out uh, or leave. Uh, so this way you can have other people in it other than me, and this way you can DM me when you need it. 
So if you need a group created for you, um, just DM me and I will create that group and invite you in it. And I'll put people in it and I'll fill it up with a representative amount of people. And I don't know that I could put everyone you want in there because some of those people may have me blocked, but I will try. Um, Sci-Fi Sith Dan recently had a very big spike in his, uh, in his subscribership and uh, he does BSG and BSG, uh, his own thick on BSG. Um, and uh, he's openly, you know, saying like he uses an AI to make, to write it. So he's talking about his process. And uh, I would say this, it's, it's pretty good, the fic. And he's being honest about how he made it. So I want access to one of those AIs. You do, chat GPT. Yeah. I don't, I don't know or by the way, one. I just... Uh, well, I have an app that, that you can access at any time. Have you heard about that? Oh, is it Grok? No, I call it Chimp GPT. What it was is they had a, a monkey that they used an experiment on, a chimp, if you would, uh, which I believe makes it an ape, right? But uh, they had a chimp, and it could either um, push one button and watch Disney Star Wars or push another button and get a hit of crack. And what happened was after it hit the crack button like 60 times in a row, it was so brain damaged that it started hitting the Disney Plus button to turn on 10 minutes at a time of Disney Plus. So it watched like 75 to 100 hours of Disney Plus. It knows everything about Disney Star Wars. It still remembers sign language, although it's messed up in the head. So like its hands are a little shaky. But uh, because it smoked so much crack, it started watching Disney Channel. Irreversible brain damage. Uh, this poor chimp. So we have Chimp GPT. Let me hear. There's the link. I just shot it to you. If you open up the link, uh, the chimp is isolated in a room. We feed him several times a day, and we got him. We've weaned him off the crack into Disney Plus. But this is—it's not an AI. It's an organic eye. But we did enhance it with the crack to give it a special outlook. You can use Chimp GPT, and the chimp—if you, you ask it questions, it will give it a slice of food after it answers you. It's very wholesome food. It's been wholesomely grown and ethically sourced. It's free range um, apples. So, um, apples, huh? yeah, free range. It's messed apples. up. It should be bananas. Um, you know what? That's a misnomer. Um, chimp uh, monkeys aren't that crazy about bananas, but they'll eat them. Uh, but Chimp GPT from all the crack smoking, his favorite thing now is apple pizza. And of course, he puts pineapple on it. But, you know, that's what crack will do to you. Uh, I'm sorry. That's what Disney Plus will do to you. He was he was he wasn't good after the crack. I'm not saying the crack was good for him. I'm saying his judgment after like 35 hits of crack or 35 times hitting the crack uh, dispenser was so fucked up that he then started hitting a Disney Plus dispenser knowing no better. And then every time he hit the Disney Plus dispenser, he got stupider and stupider. So now we have a chimp with effectively a negative IQ. Um, and um, I have no rancor or anger towards the chimp for what it's done to itself. But it is what it is. It is a uh, it is a TBR. It is a I'm sorry, a crack, uh, a, a crack damaged Disney Plus destroyed chimp. So you can use Chimp GPT to get the the uh, to get the answers. All you got to do is just I, I I've rescued this animal from from the uh, Provasic Devon McGregor lab. They're developing something called Provasic there, um, but uh, I don't know. You can so you have access to Chimp GPT. Dang! Oh, dirty here, apes. This is Mrs. <laughs> Are you excited for the uh, new what seems to be three movie arc is being teased from Planet of the Apes? It's the same people. Three movie arc. It would seem like they're going to. Well, what they did was they did they I and I'm ready to call this innovative. I like the guy who makes the Planet of the Apes movie as much as I'm not crazy about Denny Villeneuve, and uh, I I know it's it's now been established that it's Denny Villeneuve. But if I call him by his name correctly, I can't call him Villain Venu because to me he's a bit of a villain. You know what I mean? The way he's cranked out some uh, uh, bad statements and some bad stuff. So v Denny Villeneuve, he he, I, the way I'm not crazy about him is the way I like the guy from uh, what do you call it? The way the way I like the guy who makes the Planet of the Apes movies. Uh, he he was slower on the second one because he said he needed more time for story, and then when we saw it, we we could kind of see why. The third one was 
easily the weakest, but the thing is it had some highs in it and some good stuff in it. And it also had some, some, some bonding and some things that made sense. The apes had progressed in a way that made sense. And then at the end, they kind of turn Caesar into Moses. He leads his apes on a really long journey to a promised land where things are a lot better than where they were. So they start out in Frisco. Who knows how far he goes, right? So the original I'm not surprised movies, that a disease starts in Frisco. Yeah, from a monkey. Um, I wonder when the – but uh, here's the thing. So it's like Outbreak. The uh, thing is he travels – to wherever, and I guess he doesn't go with them. With them, he dies, and they go alone. It's a lot like the Ten Commandments that way. But uh, which is kind of co- a cool nod to Charlton Heston, who is the first Planet of the Apes guy, right? So they give him that ending to relocate them physically. They could still be on the West Coast, but it doesn't matter because we know they walk for an indeterminate amount of time, and there's great threats to them where they were. But humans are going mute, and humans are losing their grip on technical society. And so he could be on the East Coast now, and they could replicate everything from the first arc of movies because the first arc of movies, the uh, spaceship returns and crash lands in the ocean off of New York. The second movie proves it's New York. Actually, the first movie proves it's New York because when he rides away, what does he see in the sand? Liberty. You. Blow it up, you maniac! Oh, God damn it! By the way, that was considered extremely strong language. I had to start thinking about movie ratings with that. He that movie might be responsible for like PG because he says "God damn it," and that's blasphemous, and then therefore mature uh, mature stuff. Well, at least we and know think- Christians won't go doing certain things over that. Exactly. But the thing is, once it's blasphemous, like the idea from Hollywood that I always knows best was that it's bad for children. So people had to say, are all movies the same or do we need to maybe put a label on them? Well, exactly for that, like Germany, that. it could be worse for the rating system. Theirs is just kind of a, a joke. Do you have like a bunch of ratings, or is everything just easily demonized? Easily demonized. It's Germany. Ever since they lost, they've become weird. I would argue that they were really, really, really weird to get in the position where we had to beat them. I would tend to agree with that. They're being extremely deeply and enduringly weird for a long time when we had to come there and straighten them out for the second time. And that doesn't mean we don't love everybody from Germany. Like, where's Rev Burn Fried Axe Wielder? It's not here. You got a bell later. Now, Melvin, it was great to see you. Um, Thank you so much for coming by. Um, It was great to see you and uh, have a good one. Um, I don't think we're up against the drinker, but who knows? Um, You know what? We take on all comers here at Admiral Teague. What are you going to do? You stream when you can stream for as long as you can stream. And we got our friends hanging out with us. Yeah, I'm wondering if people are anticipating the next uh, the next Planet of the Apes. But uh, as I'm looking now, it's like people want to hear positive reviews first, 50%. And the economy demands good reviews first is 50%. So the weather and the economy, they don't – they are not reasons in themselves. It's that because of the economy – Something that we used to do. Like, how many of us used to absorb bad movies? You know what I mean? I I don't know about you, Cyrus, but when I was younger, movies cost substantially less. Everything costs substantially less. Gas is still expensive. Movies are expensive. Everything is expensive. I'm going to get freaking solar just so I don't have to pay an electric bill. Um... I would agree that that's the kind of thing that creeps up. And I would say if you had a vehicle like a hybrid might not be the craziest thing, but who the hell am I to say? Because I'm so bad at driving. You can make your own charger though. That's the good part. Like that's my favorite thing is you don't have to use a grid, but that means that you're kind of screwed if you work a nine to five, because you then need that solar power to recharge your solar recharged vehicle. Unless you rely on a Why not? battery bank. 
You might not, because if you work 50 miles away, you have four times more mileage than you need on most cars that are made in the last two, three years. Yeah, I guess it depends on how much daylight you'll you got have about 400 miles. And how much you use. Yep. Um, I think what you should do is you have a char- uh, you have a you have a solar panel at home charging up a battery that you then charge the car off of, and then the sun will be up for a while before you get out to leave for work. I mean, if you're in a good area, you could always have one of those mini trailers with solar on it, or you can attach solar to the top and do it that way. I would be afraid to build my own charger because I'm so fucking stupid. I'll burn my fucking house down. Oh, leave it to electricians like me. I trust you. Let's see. Let's see what the um. Now the weekend is totally and completely over. The weekend box office for. Let's take a look. Box office mojo is considered the good one, right? Um. Let's see what the Ghostbusters finished off with. I heard a hundred million. Uh, I think the movie cost seventy million or something like that, which means one hundred and forty million. Withers to brisket, right? So that's like the co- the the cost of uh. So the latest dailies on Sunday it made eleven million, and over the weekend forty five million. So that number held up. That seventy four percent when we estimated up to forty five million, we were right. We were within like a couple of like ten twenty grand. Uh, and Dune Part Two has made seventeen million. So that's been out for a while, and uh. The dailies for Sunday, March 24th, Dune made $5 million, to give you an idea. So it's definitely owning Dune. Kung Fu Panda 4 falls to number two at $4.7 million. And I think it did not outperform Dune 2. And Immaculate and Arthur the King round out the top five. But uh, we're taking a look here. Um, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, $45 million even domestic. Let's take a look at international. Holy shit, Kung Fu Panda beat it in the China and the United Kingdom. Uh, this works like shit. Let me take a look at this. We isolate the movie. Um, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Here we go. So March 22nd, Friday, it was in 4,345 theaters, which is a still in. Ooh, Sunday did fix, fix Saturday a little bit, so... Saturday, 16.1 million. That was uh, Friday, 16.1 million. So not the most kick-ass opening. Saturday, a day with real for shit weather where the looked like the Northeast was getting power washed from the sky. Uh, 17, 000, uh, $17 million. So they were up to $32 million. And then Sunday, $11 million more. Plus the change, it was $45 million, Playing in 43,400, uh, 4,000. 345 screens average box office on friday of 3700 on saturday of 4000 and on sunday of 2500 almost 2600 to date internationally 40 why okay that was domestic so let's go with the international International, it picks up another 61 million. Okay. Oh, 16 million. So the okay, 60. So the total is uh is 61 million now. It's it's starting to get uh wow. So it's so it's a 50 million dollar opening. They're up to 61 million dollars. They're nine million dollars short of making production money back and nowhere near close to making back their money for um promotions and let me verify the promotion as a production cost it is it is crazy this movie seems to be tanking but then again there were things about ghostbusters one or ghostbusters afterlife um that kind of needed to addressing it was a good movie um but it had no jokes in it it had like four jokes in it and they were terrible um only like one of them even came close to working. Holy shit. So the Ghostbusters Frozen Empire budget is reported at 100 million. So this needs, this seems it'll get, it'll claw its way back to co- to getting back the money it cost them to make it. And the idea that they pushed it back till now 
seems to reflect that they were right when they assessed this to be a movie that wouldn't be able to compete. Because Kung Fu Panda is still kind of mauling it a little bit. God, the only non-vegetarian panda. Um, did you expect this from Ghostbusters? And are you are, are you surprised? And if well, however you feel, explain. Hold up one second. I'm a little distracted over here. Okay. Um, Cyrus, of course, uh, lives uh, on a mountaintop where there are many mountain lions and uh, goats. So sometimes he has to fire a weapon repeatedly to keep them at bay. He doesn't fire to delete. He fires to uh, frighten them off. So sometimes all you have to do is make enough noise on the edge of the woods and you spook out the threat. Animals get lucky. Yeah. People do not. That's right. And anybody who's just coming here, if you haven't taken our poll, we're trying to see uh, what's going on with Frozen Empire. It is on. It, would you say that sixty-one million dollars for Ghostbusters is underperforming for a ghost for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire? The How one hour and fifty. What's that? It's been out How since Friday. Been out, yeah. right? A sixty-one hmm. million dollar opening weekend versus a one hundred million dollar budget. You're going to have probably a 36% drop-off by next weekend, 30% drop-off. There's a few fast. factors that might make it go the up The reviews down, are mid. You know? the re but the reviews are mid. I want to say underperforming. Well, here's the thing. Versus the budget, it's, if you had invested in this movie, how would you feel about its performance? You'd be like, the fuck? Would your hair well, be on If it was like yet? a $500 million movie, I'd be pretty pissed off. Including advertising and all that. It's it's a hundred million. Wait, hundred million to make the movie and advertise it, or just make it? No, it's probably. I'm gonna say. Be, I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna say something other people haven't said, and I might be wrong. But this is my matrix for now until I hear more, because I'm still investigating this. They say it costs as much as the movie to publicize it. That might be true. Here's the thing. Publicity firms, uh, PR work is seasonal, too. I live in New York. I know a lot of people who work in PR, right? Like, they work a lot more certain times of the year than the other. And, like, the biggest time of work is, like, the run-up to Christmas when they do a lot of movies and shit like that. But then the minute Christmas ends for the next seven weeks, do you know what they do nonstop, always, only, and ever, all day, every day, and nothing else? Other than you annoying everybody? They annoy everybody all the time. They never stop doing that. No. The one thing that publicity people and people who work on Madison Avenue doing ads do more than anything else, you'll never believe it. Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Ah, who cares? I well, think the Phantom thing Outsider is, nailed it, though. Once it's Easter weekend, you'll probably see those numbers go up. You know, do you what, think this middle of the school year? The thing is, it would be the we could only hope for like less of a drop off, a drop off so small that it stays in theaters. But it's not block. block this is not a blockbuster. This is a party favor of a movie. Uh, this is not going to save the save the uh, save any studio. And right now, it's looking like unless Ghostbusters fans go out there sort of in force, this might be it for Ghostbusters as far as this new iteration. And uh, maybe the 2016 people will use their license to make a sequel to their movie and just really make everyone hate Ghostbusters. What do you think of that? Is it 2016 one, the fanfic one that claims to be Ghostbusters? They have a legit Ghostbusters license. They're the female 2016 non-Ghostbusters. They may have a license for it, but I think most fans will say that's not freaking Ghostbusters. That's fanfic. Uh, I, I just call them the, the fake Ghostbusters. An accurate title. Yeah, um, it's a it's a fake Ghostbusters movie. Melissa McCarthy. I mean, in Saint Vincent, she's good. She's not always terrible. But she didn't write Saint Vincent. You know what I mean? She wrote parts of Ghostbusters. And the failure of Ghostbusters 2016 has followed around all of pop culture for such a preposterously long time. That it's sickening. And my other the one thing, thing I, is, yes. um, other than like, shoot, what was it? Maverick and Mission Impossible, Top Gun Maverick, obviously. Other than those, I think for the most part, ever since COVID and the economy and all the crap going on, people either can't afford it or they just stop caring, other than having like a streaming service where you can watch it at home and you're already paying less. Plus, you can. Like get a take and bake pizza for next to nothing compared to, you know, like a big 
drink at your local theater. So people are getting Guys, wiser it, about their money. If it'll stream soon, throw in a comment that that's what's stopping you. Because it seems to be like if you love Ghostbusters, you know, it's it's you would want to see it in theaters. And until this, I was under the impression that Ghostbusters was, uh, you know, sort of the sort of movie that people had the desire to see them make more and that the fans would show up at theaters. It seemed to be like Ghostbusters was one of those sure, sure things like the Spider-Man No Way Home. But uh, we got seven votes. Want to hear positive reviews is outstripping economy demands good reviews first. The economy demands good reviews first doesn't mean that what, what that means is people do have the money. Right. In my interpretation, it would mean that people do have the money, but that they don't feel like wasting it. It feels like wasted money and it's an inconvenience more than it'll make or break your month. That's what I that's what that one means to me is that the economy demands good reviews first means that like it's not just playing around money anymore. It's not going to make or break anybody because a hundred bucks shouldn't really, you know, it let's face it. If you don't have it, you need that hundred bucks. It seems like all the money in the world. And I've been in that position too. So I'm not ma making fun of anyone's circumstances, but at the same time, uh, I, I have a hard time understanding how ghostbusters could perform this poorly. There was no way for word of mouth to kill the movie, which means that, People rewatched Afterlife and it's just they found it to be too mid to go see. They weren't worked up enough to just reflexively see it. You know, I I thought Ghostbusters. They definitely nailed it with Afterlife. Up. They nailed it. But they nailed I think it, Mark Harkness is nailing the problem. current reason. Mark Harkness says, and Mark, I I I, I, I love your comments. I always say to everybody, like when the Mark Harkness comments come in, I've got to try. I, like I try my best to get them in. And there's a few people like that. Honestly, all of your comments mean a lot. At Masters Maniac Mexico, man, when 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 he got mocked and uh, and laughed at by by a guest on. Well, I was splitting a stream, so technically I was a guest on their stream, but it was my chat. Like I don't go after my chat. Someone splitting streams with me can't do it either. I have, I will stand up. And don't do And if you're going after your own chat, wow. How do you have chat? You know what I mean? Whoa. That was a rookie mistake by that person though. Um, but you know, I, I'll stand up for my chats, right. To ask questions. Will I get to everyone every time? No, it's a different story. Afterlife was needed after the disgrace of 2016. That's true. But there does not seem to be a compelling reason for frozen, ooh, frozen empire to exist. Yeah, you know what? Because you tied it up too tightly in Afterlife, people feel like they can leave it there. Because that did complete a story, didn't it? If we just cut that scene with the sparking grid at the containment field back in New York. I think there's there was another thing as well, is people are sick of things that are just filmed in New York, filmed in Los Angeles, filmed in London. Can we get some... Yeah, they're always talking about you know diversity and this and that. It's like, how about some diversity of where you film, of location? Like Afterlife did that. I love how they did the back country, not much around. That was a nice change, and it made sense. You know, you had property somewhere, it was passed down, things happen. But I'm so sick of oh, the aliens are destroying Los Angeles and New York. What else is new? Who gives a hoot? Um, you know, it started with Roland Emmerich, uh, really established that blowing up New York puts your movie on the map. Uh, but I like Independence Day. And, uh, you know, I was there on the July 3rd when the Harvester aliens destroyed New York City. And um, I'll never forget, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't know, Cyrus, you were probably a baby when it happened. But when the Harvester aliens attacked Earth, it, it was rough. It was upsetting. Um, or maybe and, it was necessary. I don't know. I mean, now look at the way things are going, man. Sometimes it's like natural disaster seems imminent. Natural disaster seems immigrant is true. Um, and, and I just remember, um, you know, all my friends uh, were, you know, in the city and I was worried as hell about, you know, what would happen next. And then the next thing I know, you know, it's, it's nighttime and, uh, People start to flee the city because I think 
there's a perception that the aliens are going to become hostile. And like, oh, there's a bunch of fucking idiots um, on top of the Empire State Building celebrating it like it was some kind of thing to be celebrated. And then the aliens engaged their main weapon and blew up the city. It took out a huge swath of Manhattan, and it was... Oh, was it really lost, though, when they like blew up the hippies? It. All I know is that after the attack, the next day, I got a phone call from this therapist I've been trying to book to, to help me for, like, years to be my shrink, and he said that... Uh, the TV producer who had been taking up all his time, TV news producer who had been taking up all his time, had been uh, had had found a new therapist. He said, or, or I don't know. Um, uh, at any rate, he said that the guy was a friend of David uh, who had saw who had hacked the uh, alien ship with the uh, the power book. But the thing I remember most about that was the next day. It's like on a on, on a crackly AM radio, you know, in 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 the woods in Long Island. You know, uh, huddled the huddled masses. You know, uh, we we heard. You know, really it was for us with the time difference. You know, it wasn't really pre dawn anymore. You know, but we heard um, we heard those immortal words. You know, good morning. In less than an hour, aircraft from here will join others from around the world, and you will be launching the largest aerial battle in the history of mankind. Words should have new meaning for all of us this day. We can't be consumed by our petty differences anymore. We'll be united in our common interests. Perhaps it's fate that today is the 4th of July. And you will once again be fighting for our freedom. Not from tyranny, oppression, or persecution, but from annihilation. We're fighting for our right to live. To exist. And should we win the day... The 4th of July will no longer be known as an American holiday, but as the day the world declared in one voice, will not go quietly into the night, will not vanish without a fight. We're going to live on. We're going to survive. Today, we celebrate our Independence Day. But I digest. They rebuilt the city after that. And it looks just like it did before the Ghostbusters movie. And the, the Ghostbusters firehouse was so far downtown that the burn didn't reach there. But uh, you know what? I'm not going to go there anymore. I'm not going to bother going there to film the inside of the firehouse because there's not, the movie is only doing okay. It's actually kind of tanking. It's only doing okay. Um, it's got 61 million. If it goes down 30%, What's seventy percent of sixty-one million? About forty million. It'll make four. So my my publicity thing is that right now, this time of year, because there are only just so many movies coming out, you might be able to save some money if you release a movie now, because the PR firms are kind of looking for work. Is my impression. So maybe it costs less to market a movie right now. So maybe it's only a hundred and fifty million bucks to sell this thing, but that's still that's a hundred and fifty million bucks. Uh, so I bet it'll go up on Easter weekend. It's next weekend is Easter weekend. One day is taken out by a hot by family gatherings for a lot of people. The people who would see this movie, it would seem to me, they said it was fine for young for for kids, but they said like younger kids might be lost and distracted. I mean, they say that about just about anything with kids these days, so I'm not really worried about that. The existence of the Ghostbusters and the way the franchise went after movie two and before 2016 implies it's okay for children. Sort of the way it's not as true. Batman kind of implies violence the same way that like at the, when the first Batman movie came out, it was implied that Batman meant it was a fitting movie for children. I'll be right back. No problem. Batman had been like a children's figure until then. Guys, I'm going to show you these numbers for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. They're only just so encouraging. I don't know what to tell you about it. Huh. The hour just struck. I guess a few people ran, uh, went off to check out some other stuff, but that's cool. I'm really glad that you guys who have opted to hang around, I'm going to just pull down this comment for a moment and mark where I'm at. Um, let's expand this a little bit. Watch as we do work on the fly here at Saving Star Trek. Where it's really nice to have everyone on board. Uh, let me see if expanding this just helps a little bit. Maybe I can get the 
biggest possible. Uh, it's about as big as I can make this little thing here. We viagratize the information. Here it is. All right. We have a domestic of 45 million, um, a Middle East, Europe, Middle East, and Africa is Germany, 1.7 million, Iceland, $27,000. Jeez. Norway, $104,000. Wow. Spain, 1.3 million, United Kingdom, 5.3 million. Uh, Mexico, 2.7 million, Australia, 1.9 million, Indonesia, 600,000, New Zealand, 235 grand. Not a whole lot of money, but I'm glad everybody's here hanging out. We're taking a look at some of the things that are going on. And I would say Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire's lack of success baffles everybody. The other thing going on today, if you're just coming in, is strange goings on. He did he comes, uh, like wow. He's seen better days. He seems to be in a bit of trouble. Um, all sorts of things with homeland security and X trafficking and uh, 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 um, trafficking of things that aren't animals for sure. Um, uh, I want to say it euphemistically, and I don't want my euphemisms to get me in trouble either. But um, unfortunately, YouTube forces me to do that. Ghost, Ghostbusters might have legs as there aren't much on the movie horizon. That is true. The, the weekend this Sunday is Easter. I, I no, I'm aware of that. Um, and I might, I, I, I wonder if people would want to hear a show on Easter or if people have an appetite to do other things. But um, my family plans are kind of getting reoriented unless I do part of some stuff with some family one day and some stuff with the other family the other day. Because uh, I don't know, you know, I, I have to split my time between my biological and my adopted family. Um, friendly with my biological and my adopted family, and they're just yeah. What, what can I say? Is it any surprise that they don't really know each other that well? Uh, but Ghostbusters Frozen Empire's box office, definitely something that's going to give people a uh, pause. So if it's $150 million, it is now at $90 million. The, We're looking at this movie. I don't know if it'll be lucky to break even, but it'll probably break even. Um, I can't say for sure. Um, we just don't know. But uh, as we hit the top, or we're 10 minutes into a new hour, anybody hanging around, if you tweet the stream or let people know we're out here, it would help me. I'm just hanging out. It's Teague Tuesday. We're going for broke. And uh, I guess our other biggest story today is absolutely Puppy Combs. No one saw that one coming, uh, unless you were paying attention to the news, in which I guess everyone saw it coming. But um, certainly I'm surprised that... Uh, Puppy Combs got in this kind of trouble. I mean, there's some crazy stuff going on in the Supreme Court. Uh, RFK Jr. will not give up his presidential run. Um, Roman McDaniels describes having a meltdown. There was an attack in Moscow. No, nothing about that. Those are our headlines. Let's see. New York subway death. A suspect in fatal Manhattan train shove a repeat offender. What the absolute hell? A Bronx man is charged in the death of a subway rider. He allegedly pushed onto the track. An attack that appeared to be unprovoked, says Channel 7 ABC uh, on Tuesday, March 26th at 2.39 p.m. So this just happening moments ago. So they caught this bastard. Um, Appears the attack appears to be unprovoked. Uh, I bet it was. Uh, according to police, it happened uh, just before 7 p.m. Monday. So that was Monday at 7 p.m. The offender is caught inside of 21 hours. That, thank God, is efficiency. 53 year old man have been shoved onto the track on the number four train. Oh, horrible. Carlton McPherson, 24, was charged with murder. Throw him in the darkest hole we have. Execute him if you have to. Give him due process. Uh, the NYPD has responded to past incidents where McPherson was acting erratically and authorities say he has a history of mental illness. Terrible. He was released without bail after he was arraigned on October 31st for arrest for assault, menacing, harassment, and other charges in Brooklyn. Failed to show up for court twice and was issued a warrant for his arrest. I don't know what we could do except have a really big warrant squad, but yeah, recidivism is a real issue. 
Um, and the second issue we have here is severe mental health problem that played out on 125th Street and Lexington Avenue at the subway station. This is very terrible and very sad, but the NYPD got someone in custody really fast. So I guess today's entertainment news will tell us some more stuff that's a little bit more germane to what we do. But wow, NYPD getting there, man, pretty quick. Diddy Combs, Steve Martin's, the irony of Steve Martin's life isn't lost on him. I wonder what Steve Martin has to say. Um, I believe he lives in Manhattan these days. From the AP, uh, Steve Martin has long marveled at the many phases of his life. All right, yeah, all right. So he's really, really old now, and, and he's, ha he's happy he's still alive. Prince Harry being mentioned in this whole thing with Epst with uh with what's going on with the arrest, or I'm sorry, with the search of the property of uh, of P. Diddy. He's not accused of any improper behavior. He was accused of being someone that, his name was mentioned as someone that P. Diddy would drop their name for attention or to seem more legit in what he did. So it's hard, like it doesn't look like he did anything wrong or is sustaining any sort of, uh, and, and or any sort of nefarious stuff for the for the prince uh he didn't seem to do anything terrible hey andy morrow welcome back my friend let's see bridge in baltimore was knocked down by a cargo ship late last night or early this a.m jesus christ that to me is very very newsworthy major corridor between uh states and the northeast uh and and the mid-atlantic region if you if it's a if it's the big enough bridge and slows things down that can have an impact on trade Something like that could affect, uh, in a peripheral sense, a lot of the world. Had some spaghetti bologna. All right. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, what kind of sauce did you like putting on that? And this is true. Yeah. Um, although he wasn't charged with any felonies, all those things are misdemeanors. So I don't know. He's only a repeat offender, it seems, as of the point that he committed the second crime of murder. And... Uh, after due process, should they deem that the penalty be execution, that's just fine with me. New York State has a death penalty. It hasn't been enforced in forever. But it sounds to me like he's far too mentally ill to be held uh, responsible for what he did. It also sounds to me like he's far too mentally ill to be released without bail. This person could have been remanded to an institution where they could have assessed his sanity. Clearly. Since he was bent on murder and other things, he probably would have pulled it off one way or another. But maybe he was so insane that he would have been in the place where he would have acted on these impulses and we would have been able to restrain and stop him from harming anyone or minimize the harm he could do to somebody. Maybe he just punches an orderly in the face and maybe he gets some pills and maybe he gets some treatment and maybe he gets some help before we find out whether or not, uh, you know, we just let him free range around New York. If he's menacing and harassing people, maybe menacing and harassing people and knowing what the circum, what the punishment is. And you know what, if you get arrested for menacing and harassing in the middle of the night, there's night court, but that knocks off at a point and you're going to end up getting sent to Rikers Island. And like, that could be a fucking nightmare. Like I wouldn't know. I don't break the law as a matter of course. Uh, but uh, you know what? I, I, I have seen what the, I'm a son of a police officer. I've seen what New York City has in Storpia. You don't want that for your room. The Francis Scott Key Bridge in there is video of it. Looks like the ship lost power before the collision. That is, let's see if we can find some video for that because that, that sounds interesting. Um, and, and I don't think anyone can own news, which is something that people, Francis Scott Key, it's, it's auto filling, collapsed. Holy, whoa. All right, let's find some video. 31 minutes ago, nine hours ago. Okay, this is so long ago that they no longer own this news footage. I'm just waiting for the commercial to play and killing ad banners, but it looks like I do have some video of the bridge collapsing, and that ought to be something. Uh, I'm very interested myself. I don't know about you guys. Here we go. The video is only a minute and 33 seconds long. Let me see what I can do on this one. Hold on, guys. I'm working on it. 
All right. Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsing. Y'all got it? Looks like everyone can see this too. Now, viewers engaged. Let me take down this comment for a moment. There it is. So the video is not all out long. Whoa! Holy fuck! No, the other one was muted. Is this the Chinese freighter that hit the bridge in Boston? Holy shit, Baltimore. For Baltimore? Holy fuck. I hope everyone's alive. I'm fairly sure everyone's alive because I think what happens is it fell on the cargo container part, and I think that the ship was there for a few minutes before the uh, bridge actually failed. Okay, yeah, I would hope that nobody was on that bridge. It looks like, well, I don't think uh, anyone was on the bridge, and I don't think, well, cars might have still been stuck there. Is there any loss of life? What's it? This is insane. So there is no audio. Phantom Outsider says 12 people were, quote, missing, unquote. Um, hopefully they're fine. It is hard to account for everyone if they're on the bridge or if they Holy fuck! I think this is a railway bridge, though. I don't think it was a commuter bridge. Oh, that's even worse because the bill will be way bigger, economically worse, that is. Uh, right, life, right, right. Different thing, but that company responsible is going to have to pay so much money to have all that expedited. Or go bankrupt. But well, in that case, we could just judgment. seize the cargo ship and its cargo. It looks, yeah, that looks like a real good ship now. You want that cargo ship? I mean, like, I would need $25 million to consider hauling it away. And that would be contingent with uh, all sorts of riders on that contract that if the EPA stopped me, fuck you, I don't have to do it, but you owe me $10 million for wasting my time. That's the only way I would take that contract. Do you have any idea what could have happened? Think of that. If it's a Chinese cargo container ship, what if it was just like one whole thing of lithium batteries that was burning and melting and just fell into that river? Don't eat the fucking fish. Starting to think maybe when they go near bridges, they need to have tugboats at all times. that we seeing here is that uh, Francis Scott, holy fuck, it's worse. It is a commuter bridge. The Francis Scott Key Bridge was a steel arch continuous through truss bridge spanning the lower Patasco River and Baltimore Harbor carrying the Maryland Route 695. Oh shit, Route 695 is fairly fucking important. Um, holy fuck. It's part, I think it's part of the I-95 uh, um, corridor. Um, wow. Between Baltimore and Dundalk, Dundalk, Maryland, the crossing between Baltimore City and Baltimore County also passed through the... Also passed through the it's already written in past tense. Wow, they, uh, they updated it already. Unless... Um, it was originally known as the Outer Harbor Crossing until it was renamed... Uh, the Key Bridge or Beltway Bridge. The bridge was opened on March 23rd, 1977. The Key Bridge was a toll facility operated by the Maryland Transportation Authority. As of July 1st, 2013, the rate for cars was $4. The bridge was part of the EZIP pass system and included the dedicated EZIP pass lanes in its toll plaza in both the north and south. Blah, 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 blah. The main spans of the bridge were destroyed March 26, 2024, when the container ship MV Dolly crashed into one of its support pillars, leading to complete failure. There were people on this motherfucker. On March 26th at 1.27 Eastern Daylight Time, 0527 UTC, the main spans of the bridge collapsed from their Singapore registered container ship Dolly. When the Singapore registered ship Dolly lost power and collided with one of the main support pillars. The collapse was declared a mass casualty incident. Sonar exploration detected several vehicles underwater. Two people pulled out of the river alive. 
while at least six are still missing. President Joe Biden says he intends to ask Congress to fund the bridge's reconstruction and said all resources are being made available to assist response to the incident. He said he plans to visit Baltimore in the coming days. Um, I would point out that Baltimore is like 40 miles from D.C. He could be there tomorrow. I guess they told him not to travel yet. Well, he'd always... With any president, there's always like a delay. They can't just go someplace most of the time. It's not like he can speak very well anyway without a teleprompter and some drugs. No politics, but yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just saying, man. I'm calling it as it is. Everybody's seen it. <laughs> um, He's in... Where is the president today? I'm looking at the president's schedule. Uh, The president... He receives his de- received his daily brief at the White House, and he's at Joint Base Andrews. Oh no, he's on a call with Joint Base Andrews right now. Um, that is unbelievable. Phantom and, uh, Outsider. Do- if we're lucky, they'll pin it on him as a reason to finally fire him for incompetence. He's talking about the Look transportation this. secretary. This is the. Um, I don't know if he could get fired for incompetence because, of, like, think about the circumstances. This bridge. Um, oh, we're talking about the transportation secretary track record. Like, nothing's improved. It's I'm this right. thing. That's why I got the job. It's not I'm fixing all these derailments and stuff that are magically happening. You know. Yeah. No. I did the solar hey, eclipse this, already happen? No. This is the New York State solar eclipse. Hmm. 1.5 million people to enter the state of Arkansas for that weekend of the eclipse. It really takes a really weird path. Uh, the, the eclipse people are coming go to the Arkansas, the city eclipse. Wow, I think. Uh, well, the closest spot it gets to me is 500 miles. That's a long way to travel just for that. Uh, that was the closest point in the state of New York it's going to cross. 20 people were missing early. We're missing earlier. And it looks like we lost people uh, working on the bridge. This was, this, this, uh, there's definitely like, unfortunately, it doesn't seem survivable. What we saw, uh, we'll look at it one more time. It was horrible. Um, let's see if we can find some more footage uh, of that. But wow. So that explains a lot of stuff. I, don't, I guess it explains why Rumble's down. Did I tell you that Rumble? Of course, I was rumbling with Rumble, and I couldn't get it to work. I think only only someone as smart as Fat Steven, as as strong in the Rumble as him, can get on. Uh, no, it's online right now. I don't know about the streaming no, no, service, but I, it was I mean, this get, being able to get a, a slot to screen to stream and to get a streaming slot there, uh, it failed like twice in a row when I was setting up the stream. I was like, "Fuck this!" We've seen it happen before when there's a lot of news. This is a big fucking deal. This is a major American city. And welcome to Saving Star Trek, where we also show you spectacular news footage sometimes. Um, Francis Scott Key Bridge in better times. This is the this is what we're talking about. Can you see that? That was a nice bridge? looking bridge, too, but I'm guessing it had no protection underwater. It's also, you know what it is? It didn't have it, it had no protection underwater, I guess. And it's like it looks like an erector set. They should have built like a built up the concrete around it, but again, maybe it was that narrow of a passage. I don't what know. Is shit in the water. Is that just wake from a boat or is that something else? It's probably one of my relatives being thrown off the bridge in the middle of, of the middle of the day in an unconventional Italian funeral. No, uh, oh, it's wake concrete from a boat. shoes, huh? It's you know what my guess is it's not the wake from a boat it's um it, it is the wake from a boat someone has taken a really really big cargo ship through there for a second I, it's like it's telephone lines between like between us and them but then I really look oh there it is ship's electric side up fault all the more reason that when you're going in and out of an area like a port or a bridge to hug boats hug boats hundred percent I've seen cargo ships where they actually paint big arrows and letters on there. That say tug goes here or something like that. You know, it's the best way to move it around. But this is a bridge, and that's a giant cargo ship. I have seen cargo ships destroy bridges and overpasses, and it's no joke. You should always have like piloting tugs. That way, if something does happen, you're in the open sea, 
instead of right. smashing the bridge and killing people. Um. Yeah. This is. Uh, is it true that people who don't have monetized Twitter can't set up group chats anymore? Maybe I've made it so only verified people can even message me. I don't know. It seems like X Twitter was the preferred way of like YouTubers and stuff to uh, communicate. And I guess anyone who like fell into using DMS and there really isn't anything else quite as reliable. And that's not to say that Twitter is totally reliable, but like um, they seem to have figured out a way, like if they, if they charge you for the ability to make a group to do group messaging and throttle the messaging, then they're killing a way for you to get around messaging under the guise of, well, people will get spam with messages if they get added to a group. They'll run, they'll run out of their messages. Because I did cap out on messages the first day they announced that, although I do not believe that they did that to me. I do not believe I sent 500 messages, but they don't define message. So if I hit an emoji and 60 people see it, is that 60 messages? It's, it's, po it's very possible. It may count. It's like an anti-spam measure. An anti-spam measure to be in a group chat and hit like you know thumbs up. That's that's called like finding a way to make money out of nothing. But that let's see, Francis Scott Key Bridge. You can see it here, and let's uh, we got. I'm googling the collapse to see if we have any other video of it. The middle of that it went down in the middle of the night. So that video, unless there's another angle. Out the uh, commercial for Walmart. It it doesn't look like they're monetizing the uh, disaster. You know what sucks is that even though I have premium YouTube because of the way I'm looking for it through the browser, it's playing commercials anyway. Here we go. Um, so get yourself one of them ad blockers, man. Then it would just be even. I would be punished even more. If you use Firefox. Then I would be punished even more by not being able to. Ten hours ago, this is no longer news. We own this. Uh, you and I, we own this. I'm surprised there wasn't a bigger explosion after this, aren't you? At the bridge? The boat. I'm not surprised. I mean, did it anything even go up on it? Most of the stuff on the deck isn't anything that would terribly explode. You would just, it's hard to figure that, like, it's raining cars on this fucking thing. Could you imagine this happened at 4.30 in the afternoon? You'd have tens of thousands of people involved in this and hundreds hurt. I suppose that's the awful silver lining is there weren't that many. Seven people were doing overnight work in the bridge. Believed to have been tossed into the waves. In other words, it's unsurvivable. That's horrible. Wait. I need to hear that again. Okay, so that's where it is. Wow, did you hear this shit? Listen to this. Several vehicles, including a tractor trailer. Yeah, they're going to be paying a buttload of money for all everything, the funerals, wrongful death, stuff like People that. People are going to fucking prison. Forget about fines. There will be fines. Someone needs to be really just... Someone needs to go to prison. I'll end the poll in 60 of your seconds. It also assumes we can hold a foreign company accountable, which I believe we should because it's international commerce. It's Singapore. It's not Shanghai. 
but that ship had a uh, the ship had a had a Wikipedia entry. So let's see, we can figure out from the Wikipedia. Let's just take a quick wiki, wiki on the ship. It had a hyperlink. That hyperlink may have to do with nothing more than um, the fact that this is the ship that destroyed the bridge. Yeah, let's say Singapore registered container ship. Um, Singapore wasn't hyperlinked either. They're working on this as we speak. Open, uh, open by Grace Ocean PTE Limited. As of March 24th, the vessel was chartered by Mask and managed and operated by a Synergy Marine Group. On March 26, 2024, the ship collided with the Sprint Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, Maryland, United States, causing a catastrophic structural failure of the bridge and resulting in at least one casualty. Sadly, that will not be the same. A Neopanamix container ship? What the hell does that mean? Construct. That a, a Neopanamix construction of another set of larger locks led to the Neopanamix or oh, Neopanama Panamax ship classification. Okay, so this is a uh, the biggest possible uh Panama Canal ship. Fuck. Um, what's the tonnage on this fucking thing? And displacement. Container ship chartered by Marisk, operated by Synergy Marine Group. It's uh, 984 feet, 299 meters long, 48 meters, 158 feet uh, wide or beam, with a molded depth of 24.8 meters, 81 feet. Fully laden, she draws 15.3 meters, 49 feet of water. So this ship. Cruises 50 feet deep, like the bottom of the ship's 50 feet beneath the uh, waves. Uh, she measures 91,128,000 91, gross tonnage and 52,000 in net tonnage. Dead weight tonnage of 116,000 ton, 116, tons. Container capacity of ship measured in 25 containers is 9,971 tons. This thing's fucking huge, huge enough to take out a bridge. It's propelled by a single low speed two stroke crosshead diesel engine coupled with a fixed pitch propeller. Her main engine license manufactured nine cylinder man B and W 9S90 MEC 9.2 unit manufactured by Hyundai Heavy Industries under license is rated at 41,480 kilowatts horsepower. Or, or 55,630 horsepower at, at 82.5 rotation per minute. Her service speed is 22 knots or 25 miles an hour. It is an collision in Antwerp. All that collided before. It's not going to happen for a while. Eight years ago, it, it crashed into a container terminal at the port of Antwerp, Belgium, causing significant. Da oh, fuck! The ship was already fucked up. It was it had a damaged stern. The back of the ship, where the control devices and shit like that are to steer it and stuff, had, were, were massively damaged in 2016. The berth was also damaged and closed for cargo handling operations. There were no injuries or water pollution reported. At the time of the incident, the ship was owned by Ocean Boat Maritime, a Greek company chartered by Maersk. The ship lost power. I don't know They're how much have, uh, something to answer itself. for. Well, the fact the ship had already been trashed once before, if it figures into the fact that they, I mean, and it looks like the back of the ship is intact. So if that figured into why the ship lost power, like if it was because the ship's like was like 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 in the sense of an automobile, like the frame was bent and like the ship couldn't propel itself properly, it's entirely possible that like. The ship having been twisted and having a long propeller shaft, like it was like out of alignment and sort of like, like 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 sh like shuddering a little bit as it spun, and maybe like that was due to the earlier accident. Like they have that intact, they weren't able to blow up the cargo container ship. You know what I mean? Like it didn't have like 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 self destruct charges like the Enterprise. So this is a big fucking deal. Um, 
you know, hearts go out to all the people in Baltimore, but wow, um, there's there's going to be a lot to answer for by the Singapore company. Um, a lot of people lost uh, to this terrible tragedy, um, and there's not much to say um, except that, you know, we're, we're sorry and our hearts go out to them. Um, wow. I don't know what to say. The fact that it's been involved in an accident before, plus this one and the loss of life, the economic devastation it'll do. Yeah, people are going to go on trial pretty quick. People going. They're going to want to figure person. out what the failure was and why it failed. And if it was a not, so help me, if it was a mechanic, that they're going to pin him pretty quick. It was probably also going to be like some guy who's like 70 years old who's retired from the firm that helped fix it is going to get grabbed out of his house in like fucking the Netherlands or Antwerp, Belgium, and he's going to be pulled into a fucking U.S. court and be like, motherfucker, did you fucking blue, did, motherfucker, did you like green light these blueprints? Be like, yes. And like, so what went wrong engineering wise? Like, well, I, I told them to do this, this, and this. Like, motherfuckers, did you do what he said? And they're going to follow that shit up. And if he didn't do, it, do shit right, he'll go to jail too. Like, and it's not a matter of if, but when, and it's not a matter of if, but how long on this one, in my opinion, I'm not a lawyer, but it would seem to be like, um, you would have something like, uh, honestly, it's like, you're going to hear stuff like, since you were only the, uh, captain and, and didn't have anything to do with the design of the ship, or since you were only the navigator and the ship lost power, you only do two years. Like, yeah, this is like 25 years. This is 25 years. Now, things don't worry. Uh, we have a story here that will take your mind off of it. Mindy Kaling going to tell us how colorful um, Sharpies can help her stay creative. Uh, not this dumb piece of crap. What? Are you going to sit here and say that Mindy Kaling isn't just a beautiful woman who's got these great ideas? What the fuck is going on with your teeth? Hideous what inside is up and with out. her? What the fuck is up with her? What is what is she? Did she Sharpie her teeth? Looks like somebody Boy, did. she's funny. Ha, 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 ha. Mindy Kaling returning. And we all remember what she did to Velma. That's all we need to know about her. She's returning to her Dunder Mifflin days to help people get their creative juices flowing. What would she know about that? A few days after the Oscars, Kaling caught up with the Hollywood Reporter on her new partnership with Sharpie and Papermate. Oh, no. Which real recent mistakes so are made. What? Wait, but I mean, is this because they're overcorrecting because they're associated with Trump? Does this have something to do with Orange Man bad? Oh, yeah, you should take the comment hey, off John the screen. Spola. It's been up there for a while. Take what off the screen? Andy Morrow wants you uh, to take the comment uh, off. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, ah, I'm behind. Um, yeah, so Indy Kaling's up to stop. It's not. The port is pro. Yeah, well, whew. That looked like the only part of the bridge ships could get under. That port might, wow, how do you get, you've got to get that out of there quick. I mean, we have a military, we could demolish shit like through the middle and then put like a, uh, we could we could put like military temporary bridging across that and probably have something thrown up in like two day, two weeks that people can use. But Jesus Christ, yeah, I don't know. The transportation secretary didn't kill the engines of that ship, but um, he's probably going to have his fat in the fire too. Um, I'm glad I'm not president. If that were a train bridge, old Joe would be there right now telling stale train stars. <laughs> exactly as now that is the port is I, I didn't realize that this meant the port is definitely closed. Well, I mean, I'd imagine that whole bridge is still hasn't sunk, right? Uh well, you've yeah. got to get what's left of it out of that shipping lane. It's that gotta too. be moved aside. There's what's immediately still above water if it still is. If it's not above water, it's probably this shallow is, enough to damage everything. This is such a shit show that I'll probably see an increase in shipping out my window. They should make sure that the boats should never enter a clear approach and not turn at the last minute. Is that what happened? You watched it live. Wow, Andy saw it live. Well, it was 1 o'clock here, so it was like 8 in the morning, so this was probably on British TV. Was, did the British TV show this? Um Baltimore is one of the few ports in the country that can handle large container ships. Fuck. Uh, New York's got a good harbor. Baltimore has a good harbor. Uh, the Chesapeake and Virginia, I don't know if it's as good. I just don't know. I know that below, like, D.C., the ports 
are considered generally not as good, except maybe when you get as far south as Florida. You may be talking like a lot of stuff has to be rerouted around the Gulf. You're talking an increase in the use of gas, which should drive the price down because there'll be a lot of demand, right? So that, I guess. Uh, I mean, with the extra shipping costs, it would, if anything, it's going to spike prices like crazy, especially diesel fuel. Just, oh, no, you'll pay more for a hamburger, but you'll pay less for a gallon of gas. It'll, like, it won't, won't, it'll be just as bad. There'll still be something, but all its lights are turning on and off, so the power went out. It might not have anything to do with the Antwerp incident. Politics didn't kill this bridge, says Mark Harkness. Procedures and training seem to be at fault here. The way the crew responded to the power loss seems to have been the route uh, which caused the ship and that uh, and that much tonnage hits. You can't reinforce it enough to matter. The tragedy would have happened needless, uh, regardless of who the politicians in office were. That might be true. Although well, you don't still, reinforce the bridge because you can still damage the bridge. What you do is in front and that behind the beach pylon – you put a very heavy, like super concrete there. That way, if anything, it'll damage that and you can replace that. But once it hits the bridge, you have to close it. You have to inspect it. You have to look for cracks. You may have to remove parts to look for internal cracks because if it's not completely sound. If this thing this had happens. merely bounced off the bridge and scraped the paint and we couldn't tell anything else, the bridge would still be closed for a month. But this is. Oh, much, yeah. They much, would much inspect much. every little bit of it. I don't know if any of this bridge can be saved. We're talking like uh, like a three to ten year building project. How, no, how what do they'll it? do is they'll probably expedite it, have several companies involved, do it section by section. One company will redo the concrete and everything. Another company will do each section of the bridge. It'll be a quick effort, but it'll still be bureaucracy, so it'll still be slow. I've never seen this before. This is un unprecedented in my life. Between I've seen ships hit bridges. It's nothing new, but usually they don't destroy them in the process. No, that's what I mean. I mean, we've never seen this. Uh, we've seen bridges get damaged, but we've never seen this. Um, not in my lifetime, at least, that I can remember. Um, we, we took care of that comment. Thank you, Mark, for the, for, for the observation. I would want to know how long was the ship there for before the bridge came down. Hello, John Spola. What a what a what a terrible uh, greetings on this day that brings terrible news for for many people. Um, it's sad to see. It's one of the biggest container ships in service. Yeah, the Panama the Panamax classification means that it had to be just about the biggest thing that could possibly go through the Panama Canal. I guess it stretched just about from lock to lock of of each chamber of that giant crazy uh, system that is the Panama Canal. But hello, hello to you. Um. This will also cause two supply line issues. Every ship in that harbor can't leave, and every ship headed there has to be rerouted. I hadn't uh, even fucking thought of that. They hit the bridge right where they would do the most damage. Could this be something more sinister? We'll know, but we'll know soon. No one said the T word yet, and I won't be the first. Imagine it was an oil tanker. And imagine if there had been a fucking gas or fuel truck on the bridge and that had fallen onto the uh, fallen onto the ship. We already know a tractor trailer sized vehicle went off the bridge. What it was, we don't know. Maybe no one wants to say it was holding gasoline. This that was some crazy fucking shit. Um, they need to clear the bridge because so they reopen the harbor. Yeah, and. Uh, Boy, that bridge has to be rebuilt. Uh, that bridge is fucked. Is there another way across that harbor? Hello, John Spola. We're going to take a look at the map for a minute here. Let's see. Uh, work day done. Going to walk the dog. Very quick walk. It's hot outside. It's already hot there, huh? Yeah, that's my experience when I lived in Central Florida. Is it's starting to get hot by now. Uncomfortably so by the middle of the day. And the thing is, in Central Florida, you don't get that reliable rain that you get uh, on the coasts. So it doesn't cool the area off uh, right away for a little while and release the humidity from the air. The powers that be will not tell us if this was – they may or may, they may not have a choice because someone may issue a uh, demand. The thing is that no one has issued a uh, claim of responsibility, and anything happening after now is suspect. If we find out that, like yesterday at 3 a.m., the BBC received a call of uh, 
that that in, the, or, you know yesterday an hour before the bridge the bbc received the call that something would happen in america and they kept quiet about it and they release it now that wouldn't be the uh, out of the question Carla, hello thanks for the like it's a quick ally what about this bridge eh this video looks like smoke was causing some of the lack of was 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 coming out of the back of the ship and the lights went off twice so it might have had an engine fire Thing is, was that engine fire caused by something to do with the propellers? Were the engines located close to the area where the twenty, the two thousand eight collision was? So it's a long time ago. Um, but still, twenty sixteen, the twenty sixteen crash. Um, so wow, this this is extraordinary stuff going on here. Um, generally, they never assign malice when greed and stupidity are in play. Yeah, I honestly this right now looks really incompetent um they went a long way to fake looking the, the ship looking like it was losing power you know what i mean to cover up for it like if it was t word um well then i think that um if it was chaosism if it was intentional chaosism if it was an act of chaosism um then they did go a long way to fake a power outage and stuff like that. This would be sophisticated espionage more than uh, more than 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 chaosism. Is that a good way to use it? Lucky it didn't happen during rush hour. Thank God. Thank God. We could. In the meantime, the origin of the plot won't come to light. Um. Luckily, it was not a fucking oil tanker. Thank God it wasn't. Yeah, we could have we could have had an ecological disaster here too. All the dock workers there will be unemployed until they can clear the harbor, as nothing will be incoming anytime soon. I don't know. They're well, union men, aren't they? They are union. They'll have a uh, protection. What, what, what I would say it is depends. We, I know if you're like a, a crane operator, I would, you're pretty much set. Although with the port shut down, you might not be. If I'm the governor of Maryland, I issue an emergency decree to uh, try to uh, fix the port so that I can get things done. So what I immediately do is I give the, the dock workers a real I reallocate them to work at the places where food and other stuff will be coming into the city now for priority things so that the people of Baltimore will not uh, experience any more of an inconvenience than we know will already happen because of the gravity of the situation. That's how I would put it if I was governor because and I would also um, I, I'm sorry, but I would bring out the National Guard. And I would, and I would also bring out the, our National Guard's Army Corps of Engineers. I want, I'm on the phone with the White House right now, or I'm, at, honestly, I take, I take a, a ride to the fucking White House, and I'm like, motherfucker, I want the Army Corps of Engineers Chief Engineer here today. Put him on a fucking plane, wake him up, tell him to wash his fucking jock and get on a plane. Am I crazy? The National Guard doesn't do much anyway. We might as well use them when they're needed. This hey, come on, you have a bunch of engineers that are Guard. supposed to build fast do the combat they can do something locally you know you just need companies involved to make the power i'm sorry and Andy. do everything else yeah we are lucky it didn't happen during rush hour yeah i'm sorry i totally forgot i was like when i have like soon i'll have two screens and i won't have that problem but for the moment i do have to kind of like uh look at i can't look at one while i'm looking at the other so i'm sorry about that andy let's see phantom outsider if they made ships going to clear lane that ship was close to the pylon and trying to turn into the lane the ships need to be in alignment for entry 500 yards bridge opened in 1977 there are other routes but you're talking around a 20 30 mile detour approximately that's not as bad as it could have been, but that's still not good. Your depth under the bridge is only 50 feet. So the ship had that. I wonder if it was leaving, so it was unladen. And maybe that's why they're not worried about the stuff being uh, in there. Maybe it was, was not that. This is the sort of stuff that makes everything change. All Thank the God rules, the procedures the will change. You watch. When they're reopened and there's a new bridge... They're going to have tugboats around that bridge. So if anything happens, they'll just be on standby. And if the tugs even so much as think something's going wrong, they're going to start pushing them to where they need to go. All right. So we got 10 votes in our poll. So uh, the this is the deal with Frozen Empire back on like more pleasant topic. Um, what, and what a disaster. 
All right, so uh, what's stopping you guys from seeing Ghostbusters Frozen Empire? The economy demands good reviews, 50%. Want to hear positive reviews is 40%. So 90% of everyone, 10% of people are just openly saying it's the economy. So um, I think the deal is the economy demands good reviews means that people could go if they wanted to, but like they want the movie. Someone like Culture Casino, someone maybe like Doomcock, who they trust, has to say that they, they uh, approve of it. Oh, the ship was incoming. Yeah, send the workers to other ports to add to those ports extra manpower for extra shifts being filled. They might have to commute. It looks like they have to commute quite a distance, maybe 20, 30 miles. Uh, and they were already, because that's, I don't know how far away they'll have to go. We may be talking about relocating these guys to like Philly. I don't know what it takes to fix the fall, to, to, to overcome this. We can do it. I mean, we've had bigger challenges than this, but this is really something. And, and what a shocker. But you know what? We've got Mindy Kaling. I don't know why she's endorsing Sharpies. I've used Sharpies since I was 24 and a comedy writer. It's the way we write. It's great that they come in colors. She's not talking about Velma. Now available on Amazon. Creative markers. Do not buy creative markers from Sharpie. Yeah, these, these are the ones you don't want to buy. Whoa, this is dumb. This story in the Hollywood Reporter is nothing but a long story about how Sharpies now come in different colors. And I'm not buying Sharpie pens. I have a bunch of Sharpie pens. I like them. They made they make finer point pens that are more normal that are not felt tip that are not like the like the 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 the, the Sharpie we associate with that with everything. But wow, the, the that they would ha hire Mindy Kaling. What what does that do for you as an as a as as an endorsement? You know, it's what I mean? just trying to keep irrelevant Hollywood people that know how to destroy things employed by imploding your business. That's what it is. Who would be so crazy as to think that she would be a good endorser? Somebody that doesn't give a single care about their company and just wants to hire somebody that thinks like them. I would guess so. That's a sad. It's sad. Um, I don't know. Or, or she's she's going cheap. Maybe your company's like it's like it's only twenty thousand dollars from Indy Kaling to do a full court press, and uh, you know no one else wants to be associated with us. Uh, I don't know why. Oh, thanks. People are hitting a couple of the applause. Um, uh, uh, hey, hello, Antome. Uh, uh, Antome, hello. Welcome to the show. Nice to see you here. Um, welcome to the uh, welcome to the to Saving Star Trek, where we uh, talked about a couple of things, but we took a look at today's Hollywood Reporter and found out that uh, Mindy Kaling uses sharpies and that the Hollywood Reporter runs commercials that look like news stories. Uh, wow! New there. That was ridiculous. That's their number two story. John Stewart lays it to Shark Tank judge Kevin O'Leary for comments on Trump fraud case. We don't care about that. The bad guys, too, set for summer 2025. There are, like, no move. Like, why is all entertainment news that there'll be some movies next year? It is messed up. There'll be more movies next year. It's, like, the only entertainment story that we have right now. Godzilla vs. Kong director Adam Wingard Talks his cat's influence on Godzilla and Lance Reddick's role in the guest, too. I'm a little worried about this movie. Godzilla vs. Kong, the new empire starts stars jo stars joke that CGI monsters were such divas on set. Oh, oh, the, okay. So the car, oh, okay. Yeah, that's uh, I get what I mean by that. There is nothing happening. This is getting into spring. I guess because well, Julia Roberts just looks a little strange. I guess she's aged well. I don't know. You tell me. Mm, looks like she won't age well in the near she's future. Old. Well, she's like almost 60, so she's going to start to have to concede to age soon. But for right now, it looks like she's aging fairly gracefully. I'm not positive. I don't know who this brat this. See, here's the thing I wonder about is that this uh, the the one of the other stories we saw is this guy named Wingard, right? 
the I, the fact that he was a um that that he was mentioned and stuff. I wonder if he's really the Brad Wingard who, who makes all that bad Marvel stuff uh and bad uh MCU. I'm sorry, bad yeah, bad MCU stuff. Brad Wingard is the is the uh producer of um Secret Invasion, which is just terrible. Stephen Colbert apologizes for Kate Middleton joke. Wow, what a shock. Theater worker, local 695, reaches tentative deals with studios with craft specific issues. Does that mean craft like food? Hot Docs Fest, artistic director, programmer, exit amid, amid financial crunch. Meh. Timothy Chalamet signs first look deal with Warner Brothers. I don't know what that means. The actor's last two movies have been for Warner, generating over one two billion, one point two billion at the uh, box office. Oh, so this looks like they're going to ask him first if he wants to be in anything. Warner Brothers Motion Picture Group is staying with Timothy Sh in the St Timothy Chalamet business. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, fellow New Yorker, great actor, not so great dresser. Um, Timothy Chalamet. Although I will say this, his his fashion's gotten a better clue. Since that weird thing that I think he might have gotten paid to wear with that weird womany thing that he was wearing in that pictorial, he dresses a little weird. But don't be fooled; he's just wearing a pay, uh, like a flesh-colored shirt here. He's a weirdo, but his fashion got a clue. His hair is a little bit wacky. He's got the Edward Scissorhands, kind of like a young Johnny Depp in, in, with the crazy hair. But uh, the movie company, hey, we see the applause. Thank you so much. I love when you guys do that. Details were not disclosed, but the company said it would collaborate with the star on projects he would both act in and produce. Over the last few years, we've admired not only Timothy's commitment to his craft, which is evident in the range and depth of his varied roles, but also his unwavering dedication 100% of his time and attention to every project that's being made here at Warner Brothers and elsewhere that he does. Okay. the motion, So they love him, and I think he's really professional. His collaboration for Dune and Wonka – Wonka made money, and people, even Carla, said it was fine. So, I mean, apparently Wonka was fine. Chow May's one-two punch has so far generated more than $1.2 at the box office worldwide. We're looking at the fact that Timothy Chalamet is a really huge star now. Um, all right. While not tough, I don't know if I'm ready to call him a total effeminate or androgynous guy. Just, I can't picture him kicking anyone's ass, though. Can you? No, I could imagine him getting the shit kicked out of him, though. He could play like somebody who was a superhero who didn't need strength, which scares me because that means that, like, because he's a star, I could see DC being like, we want him as our Superman. His physique is so pipe cleanery that, uh, you know, because uh, he's like thin, as thin as me, you know, and I, I shouldn't be Superman. But he's so he's so pipe cleanery that um you know he could be Superman uh and without people getting upset about Superman being too masculine you know what I mean but at the same time like he's not like he's not androgynous to me he seems masculine enough it's 2024 it's like take it or leave it I'm not saying he's like Sam Elliott I don't he's know like, he looks a little that's... too much like Justin be Trudeau careful. he does resemble Justin Trudeau but that's not his fault maybe he's just Cuban like like Admiral and and Justin. Phantom Outsider, let me take down your uh, thing before I uh, uh, annoy another one of my uh, people. I'm so sorry that I left that up too long. Andy, thank you for letting me know. I feel bad that I left that up there so long. But we are lucky it didn't happen after, uh, in rush hour. Um, let's see. if they we, we, co we covered that. The ship was incoming, which means it could. who knows what was on it. Well, approximately 31,000 uh, vehicles use that bridge every day. Wow. That's not too much, but that, if at rush hour, it would have been terrible. The bridge near me is like 300,000 people each way every day. But the bridge near me leads to Manhattan, right? The bridge will have materials that aren't allowed in the tunnels, so propane and other hazardous materials now need to reroute. All right, so it's a limited amount of things that need to reroute. So. On entertainment, we wanted to, Kirk or Spock. We wanted Luke or Han Solo. Who wants to be Kylo Ren or Mikey Spock? Great heroes inspire. Great heroes do inspire. We don't have any inspirational heroes today, um, or a real lack thereof. I'm trying to think of when the last time I was inspired by one of the Spider-Men we won't see again in No Way Home. 
you know, in a, in a newer movie. Main thing we're starting to have villains that look a little better than the heroes. They have done especially when the bad. actors are doing wrong, you know. We are having an experience right now where we've grade the uh the bad guy towards like morally sort of in the middle where you wonder whether or not he's okay. And we've sort of um we've made too many gray area black uh gray area bad guys at the same time and that we've moved the hero off their moral center for a lot of it, right? Well, a lot of times the hero's conflicted or the hero doesn't want to do the right thing. So we have a bad guy reluctantly or feeling forced to enact a bad plan that even we feel like we understand why he does it. And a good guy who has problems doing the right and heroic thing. So it's hard to say, like, what do you do in a movie? Like, it really fucks up your stakes. You know what I mean? Not too surprised at the same time. No, but it does mess up stories and stakes. Anyway, it looks like it was more spectacular than it was huge with the bridge collapse. So hopefully the people in Baltimore will be okay, aside from the the, the, the sad loss of life. But uh, yeah, like aside from that, Timothy Chalamet, he's coming along to do a few more movies, which is good news for Warner Brothers because with two huge movies in a row, he's bankable. You just don't want to make the mistake of thinking that a Timothy Chalamet movie is huge so people will go see Timothy Chalamet and destroy Timothy Chalamet. He can save one movie and you can do that trick once it's like bugs bunny uh drinking a lot of uh of uh, drinking a lot of uh gasoline and blowing himself up you can't do it over and over you can have some fun with this idea but you can't beat it to death like timothy chalamet can save one movie once and then if his next movie is terrible you hit there's no more timothy chalamet am, am i wrong in that I don't even really know who that guy is. So. He's in Dune 1 and 2. He was in the Wonka movie. He's starting to be, he come to prominence. He's sort of like a younger Johnny Depp in a couple of ways. He's Johnny Depp-like, but he's not exactly like super tough. He's, oh, those he's aren't my kind of movies. Fan. Well, the, the thing is, like, he's not that much different than, say, Shia LaBeouf. Oh, I remember. Wow, you remember when that kid went off the deep end? Yeah, well, he didn't go off the deep end as badly as people made it out to be. Uh, the media exaggerated a lot of the shit that happened, and a lot of it stems from a key misunderstanding that started people down the road of not liking him, and that was simply this. Um, for some crazy reason or another. Um, I think the chronicles of He Will Not Divide Us, the flag that he kept putting up, in different parts of the world and people would keep taking it. That was driving him crazy and I was loving it. That was a hilarious series of stories until he finally gave up. Shia LaBeouf? Oh yeah, people trolled him hard because of that flag. I don't know what happened because of the, with the flag or what it was, but put it in a private chat so I know if it's something you don't want to say out loud. But I, I'll say this. Although it wasn't anything bad, but you know it was... Oh, okay. He was politically charged, so they messed with him, and they just kept taking the flag, and they would put something in its place. It was funny how far these people were willing to go. It went oh, so far I think that I might know what you mean. yeah, yeah, where he ended up putting one in the museum, and the museum kicked him out because people were jumping from the roof of the next building to the museum to get to it, and it was declared a hazard. Yeah, it was dangerous to put the flag there. All right. So was it a historical flag? or was it No, no, flag? it literally was a white flag with black text that said he will not divide us. And he was being political back then. It, it was a stupid oh, thing okay, to I do. know who you mean. I guess I know yep. who he was. Yep. All right. So the thing was, all the problems with Shia LaBeouf as far as everything that people perceived about him, and I understand he's got his life more back on track right now. For one thing, that Francis Pugh movie that went under, and I forget what it was called, she, they, he, he was – being set up to take the blame for that movie having problems. And she confronted him and she started giving him offers he couldn't accept and offers he couldn't refuse and trying to like coerce him into doing some shit. And she wasn't as smart as Shia LaBeouf, who's been in Hollywood longer. He fucking MP3'd her and got audio of her trying to shake him down. So um, that was a BFD. And uh, so she looked like an asshole and he came out of that smelling like a rose with like kind of you know, some like a proof that in Hollywood people will scapegoat someone if things don't go right. So he was looking to be in a great deal of trouble for a 
great many things, but he managed to show that he learned a few things. And he, he was not sucked in by any problems that um, he was suck, not sucked in by any more problems that you would expect him to have in this in this um, situation. So anyway, with that, Mark's say, asking every, a real question right now. Go ahead. Oh, you're saying on the, the entertainment lines. subject. So we wanted to be Kirk or Spock. We wanted to be Luke or Han. Who wants to be Kylo Ren or Mikey Spock? Great heroes inspire. Yeah, and trash fires don't inspire anything. Can you read a couple of comments while I check something really quick? Because it's this this thing has to be taken care of and it needs like a minute of concentration. Uh oh, what'd you do? That's a good news thing. Oh, good news thing. Good news thing is good to hear. We were kind of on the bridge thing for a while. It was starting to get so dark that uh, DC was starting to reach out to us and wonder if they could borrow some of our darkness. Yeah, no, fortunately, um, uh, I am no longer the night. Um, and I'm already um, occupied I when this uh, proposition was made. No, no, I mean, I'm no longer occupied now. I took care of this. I had to look at an offer I had and see if I was free that day, and I'm already occupied that day. So I identify as no man, said Mr. House Party 6. Man, I hope Andy Moore didn't split because I left this comment up too long. That seemed to get to him. What Was was the comment, like, weird? Did I have a weird – was it a weird comment? What? I, I left the comment uh, up for a really long time. but I think It was just up for a really long time. Yeah, I hope he did, I hope I didn't embarrass anybody or make them feel bad or want to split. But uh, what can I tell you? I had that comment up for a while because I got distracted reading of what was going on on the ship. Once I have two screens, I guess I can be my own producer a little better. But uh, they have not yet completed building the new computer, so that was a little weird. Wait, really? But yeah, yeah. Well, that's was, that's well, supposed to be like yesterday. It was, um, no, they haven't finished building it yet. We can take a look at that one together too after work, which guess what? It's, it's pretty much after work. I want to thank everybody who came by today. It's been a really great show. I had a good time hanging out and talking to everybody. So I mostly talked to people as we went. So everyone I've said, I think I said hello to you. If I missed you, I'm sorry. I want to thank everybody who stopped by and everybody who comes through later. We saw some spectacular, incredible footage. We talked about uh, some crazy stuff going on at Pete Diddy's that we didn't really know much about. Um, and we found out that Mindy Kaling uses Sharpies. Um, we celebrated Leonard Nimoy's birthday. And I think what we're going to do is probably be back on Friday. But um, I think we did all through February, the original series Awareness Month. Through March, we've done kind of different Tuesday shows. I think maybe next Tuesday we'll try to aim for something different. Um, one of the problems I had today was just a series of stuff kept me from being able to really plan out the show as much as I wanted to. So I just sort of leaned into news and current events, it's something I won't be doing again. I had to go with my standing plan B. So uh, I do apologize for sort of uh, a little bit of a crazy show today, but I thank everyone who came by, everyone who will come through later. And uh, I thank all my friends, uh, Edward Bevington, Melvin Deeply, Phantom Outsider, Tetrarch of Apathy, um, Andy Morrow, um, Melvin Deeply, who is here for a bit, um, Canadian Spider-Man, um, Sci-Fi Mombi, uh, Mark Harkness, uh, DJ Playnice, um, Mr. House Party 6, Sci-Fi Mombi, Words and Pictures, um, Mark Harkness, Andy Morrow, um, and did I get everybody? Let me keep going here. I think there are some people who came in towards the end. Let me make sure I shout them out too. I thank everybody who came by, um, including uh, Ann Tomo. Uh, thank you, Ann Tomo. I appreciate you coming by, and I, I, I salute you back. I want to thank everybody who came here to hang out. I'm just zipping up here. Sci-Fi Mombi, did I say thank you to you? Cyrus in the chat and here. Um, I appreciate everyone who came through. And everyone who's going to hang out, Edward Bevington, thank you, sir. Melvin Deeply, it was great to see Melvin Deeply. Matt G. Taylor Swift is greater than Disney Star Wars, was here for a little while. Um, and MCU, don't forget about that. It was great to see all of you and take all your chats. I'll be back soon. Uh, Cyrus, anything you want people to know? 
Yeah, not really. Just have a good day. All right, and remember, it's Leonard Nimoy's birthday. Spock! Now that finally works. Finally works the way I wanted it to. It was not reacting to controls. So let's uh let's let's get one more Leonard Nimoy line here, huh? Ship. Out of danger. Birthday of the great Leonard Nimoy. He would be 92 years old. Were he alive today? Uh, he was born in 1933. I forget. I looked a long time ago, but he'd be 92. I know that. He's one year younger than William Shatner. R.I.P. Leonard Nimoy. And uh, thank you all for coming by. Uh, we love you all. And with that, I guess uh, Carl would be... Uh, well, oh, let me turn off all right, we're out of here. We love you all. Jordy, beam us down to the planet's surface. We're going to get some Amazon and some pizza. Keep your arms and legs inside the stream. No, no smoking. Hey, Ensign, no smoking.